Beasley five, Shields five, and two to Baxter. And for the Sydney Swans, their major goal kicker was Davis, and he finished up with four. In the injury department, uh, Footscray, Royal, a bruised thigh, and for the Sydney Swans, Neil Cordy did a hamstring, and Graham Cordy suffered concussion. The crowd at BFL Park this afternoon, 18,900. Behind, well wide at the mark, as you saw. Jeff Miles will bring it back into play. The man who came back with the team last weekend. He had other ideas. Cousins is up and he takes a strong mark. Plays on quickly. This is Wallace again who's busy. Back towards full forward. Beasley's in front and he's taken it this time. So Simon Beasley, a chance now to become the all-time leader in Bulldogs goal-kicking history. He's level at the present time with another champ, Kelvin Templeton. What can he do from here? It's ironic, I guess, that he comes back to WA to get the record. Former star with Swan Districts, Simon Beasley. A good start and a record riding on this kick. From 25 metres out, Simon has put it through. Congratulations to Simon Beasley. Yes, well done, Simon Beasley. A great effort. He's reached 495 goals in only 132 games to become the uh, greatest ever Footscray goal kicker. And there's how he did it. A very good lead and an excellent pass from Terry Wallace. Well, there he is. And uh, four kicks last week for four goals. So he is a very accurate kick, Beasley. The Bulldogs, I can tell the viewers back in Victoria, are very, very confident that they can win this game. Big fist was by Scott down towards half forward. There's Wallace at the base of the pack. It's normal for him. Oh, Hawkins got one very, very high against Brennan. And Doug Hawkins from half back. It's fairly quiet last week against North Melbourne. Uh, North played Phil Cracker on him. Similar skills as Darren Davies, a young player. He went in hard after that one. It's on centre wing. Oh, they're going in very hard. But Trackley was the player on the bottom of the pack. Now it's Brian Royal. Taps it on. Clever play by Royal. Bit of a ticky touch with one, but uh, very cleverly done. He didn't, wasn't actually in position. Brian Royal, centre wing, and the Bulldogs looking good in these first couple of minutes. Towards half forward, over the back of the pack, it's Gaston. Rode that beautifully. Well read. He brings it to the centre of the ground, and John Worsfold takes the mark. Plays on quickly. This is Ania. Runs through the middle, goes long into the forward line, intended, I think, for Glenn Denning. He's surrounded down there. Does well, though, the champ. Knocks it out into the path of this man, Brennan. What's he doing on the forward line? He pulls it back towards full forward. Forward's the only man at home. And he takes the mark on his chest. So forward. Another product of Bansdale. A little foot trouble down there. That remedied. Comes grandstand side. Worst of the leaper knocked it forward. Petraglia, the hurried kick high. Rance camped underneath it against his old team. Makes the mark on centre wing. Murray Rance wasting no time. Back into the forward line and best position to mark down there is all day. Off his hands. A chance behind now for Barrett. 40 metres out. He goes down towards full forward. Ill directed. And once more it's forward in the way. Towards the outer side goes the kick. Holmook is out there. Lamb leads him in the waist to the ball. Good tackle by the youngster. The hand pass went about 10 metres. Back comes Lamb. Lamb around the outer side. Pumps it long down towards the forward pocket. Glenn Vinning is up. Got his fingertips to it. And through it goes for a minor score. Margin six points. Forward, the short pass in. This is Hawkins in the back pocket, no pressure. Hawkins runs it away. Kicks towards centre wing. Twisted away there by Scott. Taken by Main Waring to Amir. Hooks it around the corner. Flash of bodies upcoming. Libertore was in there. Gastiv cleverly. Controlled the ball brilliantly. Gastiv to Worsfold. Across it comes to Barrett. Adrian Barrytor, Daisy Cutter, what a great pass that was. Good lead by Glenn Dinning. And uh, Michael Ford had no chance there. Happy group of West Coast Eagles supporters. Glenn Dinning kicked beautifully against Collingwood last week. And he is only 30 metres out, directly in front. The captain of the Eagles fires. It looks good. It's a goal. Foster, who in the back against Zanotti. Foster, off he goes, and on long raking kick, Beasley caught behind the big fist. Comes back towards the half-back line. A chance for Miles. Can't quite pick it up. Now he does, but he's got to come back to the defensive boundary line. Hooks it back beautifully. The march is dropped by Turner. And uh, pushing and shoving going on between Dean Turner and Brian Royal. 
deep in the forward pocket. The Footscray side, Cousins, from behind. Comes straight down to Gastev, a high floater towards centre wing. One-on-one -on -one contest, over the back. All day was... Almost straight to the new player from the West Coast Eagles, that's uh, Chris Waterman. And eventually socket over the ground, over the boundary line, half forward flank. Scores level, there's Steve McPherson and Zeno Tetsaris on left of screen. Paul Day, the former Melbourne player, against Phil Scott. Surprising that Ashenko started on interchange. There's Terry Wallace playing the ball in front of him. Good goer, Wallace. Always at the face of the pack. Now, the umpire might say it was held to him. And he does exactly that. The umpire Chris Mitchell. Terry Wallace not happy with that decision. I think it was the right one. It's a centre-half forward. The West Coast Eagles. It's tapped down by Scott. Over the back is Wallace again. He's having numerous positions already in this game. Towards half forward it goes and not. He drops an absolute sitter. Hand pass. Over the top is from Winstead to Gastev. Gastev wide. He's looking for his teammate Laidley. He's got him. A short pass towards the pocket. It was meant for Glendini, but Hawkins chips in to take the mark. That was a top mark too. Doug Hawkins is away. Draws a man. Once the goal face it comes, Eppleston, a long one. Colnook has the ball on the outer side. Little chip pass towards centre wing. Well, they run still. This is Baxter. Searching hand pass. Petraglia has it now. Towards half forward, intended for Beasley. Knocked away out there. Grant's roving the pack. Gets it across to Gastiv. Gastiv breaks away. Kicks it towards the grandstand wing. And Waring with the run of it. Handles it towards half forward. Tall foot's great. This is Cronin. Australia. Good kick too. Royal gets on the end of it. Royal in front of our commentary position. Towards half forward. Scott should mark. In fact, Rance came in from the side. Now a chance for Davies. He goes long towards full forward. It's a good effort from the young Tasmanian. He just misses. Davies from North Hobart. Puts Gray with that behind. Rest back the lead. 16 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the term. This is Turner in the back pocket with the ball. Plays on by hand. A Wurzfold around the other side he goes. Looks to have a bounce. Wurzfold towards centre wing. In best position to mark out there, Wallace. It's knocked away. Apple's going to chance behind with the run of the ball. Playing by O'Connor. It's jarred for you. This is Renstead on the burst now. Runs to 50. Long towards full forward. Dropping back to him. What a great pass. What a great pass. Made it look easy, but the hard work was done while the ball was in flight. Lost Glendinning, he's having a wonderful season up forward so far this year. He's kicked 18 goals, 19, got the first of them tonight, and that makes it 20. Five points of difference as we see Tony Beginners hooking it right back down towards the half forward line. Glendinning looks as though he's going to be a dangerous player tonight. Hand pass over the top. This is the young player for Footscray in Matthew Hogg looking down towards Beasley. Beasley, centre of the pack. It hits the deck. Who's doing the roving? It's Turner, in fact, the Miles. Miles with a long hand pass. Finds Main Waring. Main Waring with a raking kick. A beautiful pass it was, too. This is Young Waterman, a left footer. Great pass again. The quick pass and the skills, kicking skills of the Eagles really showing out. Lindinning will have to kick from 55 metres. He's already kicked two. He's going for the torpedo punt kick. He's a great kick. Oh, it's a boomer. It's coming back. It's close. Mark, though, in the goal square. The big hands, four foot spray of David Alday went up and took a safe mark with a booming kick into the breeze. Alday. Oh, he's taking a punt there. But he'll have to come back. He'll have to kick over his mark. Stephen first in time for Footscray. And I think it's Petraglia that has left the ground. All day. Former Melbourne Ruckman. Towards the half-back line. Oh, there's a pack of players there. One of them was Cousins. Crashing his way through was Tony McGuinness. Brilliant player, McGuinness. Towards centre wing, Zanotti. Off the ground. Looking for Twain Lamb. He popped one straight in the back. Way on, said the umpire. Hurry kick there for Footscray it was by Colnook, but the umpires found a free kick for out in the full. Or was, what was that for, Bernie? Bernie, you've got me at the moment. Well, it was, uh, I think it was a throw. It was a throw. In fact, there's 
slam towards half forward. All the big hands here have locked. It was a pay. No, said the upper. He threw that one out. And the umpire said exactly that. And it will be a free kick going down there to the full back. Well, he's actually not playing there tonight. He's a normal full back, Linton Fitzpatrick. He goes around the outer side. Lamb is up. Couldn't hang on. It may have crossed the boundary line on the full. Now it's going to be a throw in out there. So Liberatore is off the ground. And on is McPherson. That's Scott will do the ruck work, opposed to Walday. Wins it down to into the path of Barrich. Intended for Gaston, but runs out of bounds. Not an inspiring start to this game so far. The Eagles lead it 2-1 to 1-2. And we have about 13 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the turn. Boundary throw in. All day. One down by Scott. He goes after it with the boot. Scramble after it. And again, it's out of bounds. John Worsfold having a wonderful season. Mainly as a ruck rover. Seems he could be in defence tonight. Once more, the Ruckman will do the work out there on the far side. Scott wins it forward. McPherson overruns it. Gaster deflects it across towards Lamb. This is Barrett on the overlap now. Barrett from half forward. Goes down towards the 50-meter line. Knocked away. Opportunity for Ugal. He's a little slow, Ugal. Runs into trouble. Strong tackle applied by Hawkins. But Traglia gets it out the foot square towards the outer side. Good recovery from Worsfold. He breaks away. Goes through the center square. Long down towards full forward. Lindering is going back. Ball bounces high, it made it awkward for him. He's in real trouble, Glendinning. This is O'Connell wide of the pack now, 25 metres out. Ample time to turn and go goal, which slides it across the face. And the mark is taken down there in defence by Eppleston. So Eppleston, right on the last line, in fact, behind the last line, goes to the outer side. Royal was up, fancied himself as a chance to take the mark out there. Dean Turner scrambles a kick about 10 metres, and it goes out of bounds. Boundary throw in the other side. That was the Eagles bench. All day and Lockyer this time. So a change of rival for all day. Dean Turner towards full forward. Sneaks through for a behind despite the efforts of Fitzpatrick down there. Very even contest going on at the moment. 2-1. Or well, 2-2 in fact plays 1-2. So one goal the difference. Big job for Michael Ford tonight playing on Ross Glendinning, the skipper from that kick in he finds Fitzpatrick towards half back there's Eppleston a good mark a second good mark in two minutes and pass further afield as Baxter with a high floater towards centre wing one on one young Darren Davies was the player for Footscray against Chris Main wearing and it beats both players over the line the even contest at the moment but the delivery of some of the Eagles players their foot skills are absolutely great to watch there's Worsfold a real goer but he's Colin and the ball was held to him. Two umpires tonight being Chris Mitchell and Peter Carey. The umpire de deliberating then being Chris Mitchell. It's right on centre wing. One goal the difference in favour of the Eagles. Main Waring was there. Kicked off the ground towards half back. Good play that was for the Eagles by Worsfold again, but he's put it out of bounds on the fall. Certainly, Bernie, plenty of endeavour from these Footscray players. They're really going at it. Yes, they want to prove something after the last week's bad defeat against North Melbourne. Hog plays on, kicks it down towards the 50-metre line. Big pack in the air down there. Wide of the pack, an opportunity for Davies to Petraglia. Well played, Petraglia gets through the congestion, goes Goldwood and gets it! Spencer Tracy, a man committed to a great dream. A town footballer. Mickey Rooney, the one boy who could destroy it. What am I going to do in a broken down nursery like boys? This is the true story of Boys Town. Are you going to see these boys turned out into the streets, into alleys, into reformatories, and worse, lose their home? Really? Superb performances from two of Hollywood's greatest legends. Please do me, really? Oh, God, I don't, don't do anything. Anything at all, please. Mickey Rooney and Spencer Tracy, Boys Town, Saturday. Midway through the term. This is Scott. Clean possession. Towards half forward goes the kick. It's a foot race back. In fact, it's a foot race from both directions. Fitzpatrick knocks it away. Only as far as Renstead collides with Eppleston. Renstead, a lot of courage there. O'Connell slides into Wallace. Spills free. Fitzpatrick has got it. 
high kick around the outer side, a floater. Worsfold gets a fist on it, waiting behind Zanotti. Will he run? No, he won't. He'll kick it towards centre-half forward in best position. Baxter up he goes, could have almost got the free. This is Hawkins. He breaks away from half-back and sends it back towards the outer side. Over the top, Foster. He's a strong mark, Peter Foster. Breaks away, kicks towards half-forward. Not a good kick. Beasley an opportunity. Good use of the body and a good hand pass. for Traglio, another chance. Oh, great tackle. Run down by Miles from behind. In goes Scott. The flips it across to Main Waring. Gets the cross and turn to Zanotti. Zanotti forced to kick across the goal face, but did it well. This is Laidley. Can't find the handle, Dean Laidley. Deep in the pocket. Scrambles it forward. On the 50-meter line, conan has got an opportunity now. Puts it back towards the kickoff line. Beasley was there. Fisted away well by Worsfold. Main Waring. Well, they're taking some risks. This is Barrage. Almost out of bounds, Adrian Barrage. Back to half forward. The mark is taken by Hogg. Well, Putzgray locking it in. Good stuff by the young Bulldogs. Matthew Hogg will be kicking from just outside 50. I doubt he can get the distance from here. Unloads for a long kick. Beasley in from the side. Off hands. Worsfold. Hurried kick towards the boundary line. Back goes McPherson, and the Bulldogs will bring it back yet again. McPherson on the boundary. Back to the goal square. Who's there? Beasley. Should have marked that one. One grab would have done it. This is Davies over the ball. And close quarters to Royal Hill. Snap a goal. Impressive stuff by like Fitzgray in that basic play. They really fought hard to keep the ball in on that forward line. And uh, a number of occasions it looked as if uh, the West Coast were under extreme pressure. Couldn't get it away out of that back line. And here's the replay. Beasley could have taken that mark. Dropped it. But however picked up and there's a snap from uh, Brian Royal. Not a lot of pressure from the West Coast Eagles defence. Well even though Footscray are kicking with the breeze, it's uh, approximately a, a three goal breeze. It's been a very very impressive opening by the Bulldogs. They're really throwing themselves in. No wonder when they're coached by Mick Malthouse, that's the way he played the game. There was Eugle trying to tap it away to Dwayne Lamb. Lamb attempting to pick it up but enormous pressure being put on the Eagles players and I'm sure Footscray would be aware of that. Eagles supporters looking on in hope. One goal, the difference. Great start by the Bulldogs all day. This is Dean Turner, formerly of Fitzroy. He always shuffles it out wide. The kick was by Laidley, looking for Glendinning again. Oh, it almost took it. Two G uses that body beautifully. Here's Baxter. A hand pass to Royal. Oh, gee, it's offline to a near, a near towards full forward. Up they go. It's the Eagles mark. Is it the captain again? This, it is Ross Glendini. He can't keep him down for too long. He's kicked two already. He's taken this mark 20 metres out directly in front. That was interesting off the ball. Was this shepherding? I think it was. Well, I think that uh, he used his body well, the player that was. Well, there's the kick from Glendini. At the WACA ground, scores a level. We have seven minutes and ten seconds remaining in the term as Scott wins it down. Wallace battling hard in there. Mia over the ball. The umpire will ball it up again. This is umpire Carey. It's turned out a nice night. Storms the last two nights. Pleasant enough tonight as Scott wins it down. Lamb, what a fine player he's been. Last season and this season for the Eagles. Wenstead knocks it forward. Oh, no. Boots it out wide towards half-back. Leading the race out there is Lockyer. And we'll have a boundary throw-in. Andrew Lockyer. Bulky customer. No doubt he'll do the ruck work here. All day will take him on. Lockyer in front all day over the top. Lamb again. Head down. Working. Gaster takes the good chest mark in front of Hogg. Hogg wearing him like a glove. You couldn't do much more other than be in front, but... The advantage was with Gastiv when his team had the ball, he was moving. So John Gastiv, normally a very reliable kick at goal, will shoot from about 30 metres out. His sixth kick. He likes the whacker, does John Gastiv. Mind you, he's a very talented footballer. Kick is on its way. Hits the post about two thirds of the way up. Good luck for the Eagles. Now they lead 3 3 to 3 2. Here's Ford. Put it back into play. Going straight up the middle. Cousins favoured by the bounce. Gastiv again. And again. 
twisted back to the middle foot stride as worse called hand passes to Rance. Murray Rance playing against his former VFL club towards full forward Glenn Dinning was there again well played by Ford as he shuffles it out number 21 there is Stephen Colnook as he gets it right out wide towards the boundary line and puts it over the line a very very entertaining game so far two pretty evenly contesting sides the Bulldogs starting off particularly well big task for Footscray though to control Glenn Dinning up there at full forward three goals already in this game and a very talented player Glenn Dinning there's Wallace a hurry kick down towards half forward it's fisted away by Barrage grabbed by the running Zanotti Zanotti to half forward or two players almost collided with one another here and Footscray able to almost get it O'Connell can't get his boot with Eugles there also and Gastiv tremendous pressure being put on that was Wallace hooking it out. Now it's Gastev again, wide. Aaron Davies ran underneath it. Now it's Chris Mainwaring as he ducks around. He runs to the 55-metre mark and brings it down, looking for Glenn Dinning again. Up he goes. Couldn't quite take it. Michael Ford will probably run it through him. No, he doesn't. But someone's lost their boot there as Ford comes away with it and kicks it long. Out wide is Mainwaring. Mainwaring tries to trap it. He's got it. Hooks it back to the pocket. He's got a man there, and it's Andrew Lockyer. Now Lockyer... Well, who's lost the boot? In fact, the Ford, Ford who's again. standing on the mark and it's his kicking boot. Lockyer, a long way out from goal, will kick from 52 metres. Oh, it's a nice looking drop punt. It's starting to swing back, but just offline and through from behind. Actually, Ford had something of a dilemma there. He was in two minds about whether to go back and get his boot <laughs> or not, and his man came up the ground. Brennan's come off, Ashenko is on. Meantime, Baxter has the ball on the outer side. Baxter, long towards centre wing the ground by Lamb, back towards half forward. Gastiv's in front, surrounded by Bulldogs. The leader of the band comes away, that's Royal. Towards half forward goes the kick. Foster almost the mark. Zanotti socket off the ground by McGuinness. They need more from him. He fires up. And with a big chance, Ashenko just on the ground. Deft deflection. Gets the cross to Amir, who breaks away from half back. Goes towards half forward. Showing courage was Lamb. Brilliantly done. Gastiv to Barrage. Barrage goes down towards the forward pocket. Bounces obligingly for Lockyer. Great shepherd by Glendening. He was held without it. Lockyer battles on. Pulls it back towards a more central situation. Eppleston there for the dogs, though. He breaks away. Gets the hand pass over the top. This is Wallace. Wallace goes towards midfield. Command almost taken there by McPherson. No recovery. This is Worsfold through the middle. Back towards half forward. Knocked away by Petraglia. Lamb again out number two on one. But he'll butter up. Lamb close to the boundary line the path of Barrage. That was well played by Footscray. Weight of numbers. Should get them out of trouble. Davies to Petraglia. Petraglia hooks around the outer side. Valiant attempt to mark by Worsfold. McGuinness goes in. He's dragged off the ball. They're going down out there and it's going to be a free kick to Royal eventually. He was held without it. Oh, tremendous pressure on in this game at the moment. Royal to Baxter. This is Darren Baxter. Normally plays a stopping role for the Bulldogs. He's on centre wing. It's a short one to Foster. He's right underneath it and his opponent Zanotti ducks back to take an easy mark. He's got a loose man in main wearing. Uh, the umpire said it was a push out. In fact, just before that, I couldn't quite see it. Yes, it's a free kick to Peter Foster, who's interfered with when he went for the mark. Oh. Well, it's his kick. Halfway between centre wing and half forward. Peter Foster, a high floater. Beasley from the side. Couldn't quite take it. Down to the ground. The hand pass comes to Hawkins. Good play by Cole Nook. Hawkins onto the left foot. Has missed and threw for a behind. And he's not happy, Doug Hawkins. At a lot of time. Probably could have straightened up on the right foot. I was going to say that, Peter. He didn't straighten up at all. He had plenty of time to straighten up and run towards the goals. But he ran into that pocket. Just under two minutes of official time to go. As Miles gets it out to worst fold. Worst fold. Drop punt to centre wing of good strong Mark Foster. Doing well at centre half forward. And Zanotti will have to play this player very, very close to Cronin. Goal before quarter time. Very handy here to the Bulldogs. Phil Cronin, former West Australian himself, up looking for Beasley. Up they go. It hits the deck. Here's a chance. Into the open goal. Oh, that was Steve McPherson. It was just bundled away from the ball as he kicked and he put it through for a behind. So I thought he could have done better with that, though, uh, Steve McPherson. It wasn't a hard shot at goal. Enigmatic player, Steve McPherson. 1.15 remaining in the term. Miles. Grandstand side with a high kick. Ashenko pushed in the back, I thought. We'll get a free kick. No, he won't. Well, where did that come from? Ashenko was pushed in the back and hit cannoned, I think, at all day. So it was a 
chain reaction. And Footscray getting the advantage. Holday's got the ball. No, it's going to be a free kick to Davies. He was under the ball. Lashenko got to his back. There goes the kick down towards full forward. Beasley, was he kept out of the contest? Yes, that's the decision. Oh, I don't know about that one either. I think his path was blocked then, Dennis. I think it was, certainly. But, well, the umpires need to be consistent. If they're that, we'll stick with them. Let's watch it again. It is again. Yes, he was shifted out of it at the last moment by Murray Rance. So Simon Beasley, a chance to get his second. Crowd not liking a couple of decisions back to back. Simon directly in front. Steers it through. Well done. Puts Gray lead 4-4 four, four to 3-4. That's a handy goal right in the quarter time siren, just about. 4-4 four, four to 3-4, one goal advantage, but I don't know whether they've done enough with the breeze. But probably a three or four goal advantage to the team kicking to the end. Footscray's kicking to at the moment. And we'll just have to see at the end of the second quarter whether they've done enough. There's the mark again. Shepherded it out badly by uh, Murray Rance. Well, six points to difference. 38 seconds to go in this quarter. Another one here to the Bulldogs to be handy. Here they come. A hand pass. Comes towards half forward with Royal. Now Cronin. Cronin bundled off the ball. Play on, said the umpire. All day was the man who gave that original hand pass. 24 seconds of time in this quarter to go. It's on half forward line. Four foot's great. Been a very, very evenly contested quarter. The two full forwards doing well. Glenn Dinning. And Beasley, Glendinning with three and Beasley with two. Oh, good play by McGuinness to hook it back. Cousins popped a clip around the ear. Play on, said the umpire. Here's a chance for McPherson as he hooks it high. Ducking back is Beasley, but there's the siren to end the first quarter here at the Wacker. A very evenly contested quarter. The Bulldogs, one goal in front. They lead 4-4, 28 for the Eagles. They lead by six points, 28 to 22 at quarter time. Checking the goal scorers for the Eagles. Glendinning has three. And for the leaders, the dog, Simon Beasley has two in a record. Royal has one and Petraglia has one. Let's take a look now at the record. That's hardly a tradition. <laughs> they played just the once. Tonight is their second meeting. And the West Coast Eagles looking to make amends for that loss of the Western Oval last season. Since arriving at Footscray from Western Australia, full forward Simon Beasley has presented opposition backmen with numerous headaches. His lightning leads and accurate kicking have ensured plenty of Bulldog victories in his six years in the blue, white and red Guernsey. Beasley has been Footscray's focal point ever since crossing the Nullarbor, and he's topped the club's goal-kicking list for the past six seasons. His best year was in 1995 when he booted 105 goals, the year the Bulldogs reached the finals for the first time since 1976. There, the undoubted ability of Simon Beasley, and he's continuing on tonight with two goals in that first quarter, and uh, now the record holder, Bertie, at Footscray for the most number of goals. Yes, congratulations to Simon. He was thinking about retiring last year, but uh, good to see he stuck on for another season. Tony Bahadur is standing by. Tony? Uh, yes, Dennis. Well, unfortunately, Michael Brennan's got a very sore knee, and uh, he could struggle to come back onto the ground, but listening to Mick Malthouse and the F Footscray boys, they're very fired up. They were very happy with that quarter and their endeavour, and I think that uh, he emphasised the need to keep working hard and attacking the ball. Over to you, Dennis. Start of the second term, then. Hi, Kerry's got the football. Tony Bahad here with mixed allegiances, I'm sure, tonight. A happy time at Footscray. Of course, a West Australian. The start of the second quarter at the WACA ground. The Footscray lead by six points. The tanning first term, it improved as it went on. Ashenko wins it out of the centre. This is Davies. Oh. Shade high. And Davies will get the free kick. And the crowd don't like that one. Here's Davies. Towards half forward, an early goal would be nice for the dogs. Foster, she's good in the air. Peter Foster started at Fitzroy. Away he goes, aided by that left foot. Long towards full forward. Jostling Jewel down there. Beasley free kick, I thought. The ball goes through for a behind. Well, the man was trying to get at the ball, Simon Beasley. Should have been a free kick to Simon Beasley. He was held. There was only one man going for that ball then. And that was Beasley. As we see the score, 4-5, 3-4. Hugel in front. Oh, good mark. Strong mark by Troy Eugle. He's on half-back flank. Off he goes. Very, very casual player. Left foot kick. Finds Murray Rance. 
Rance, a long hand pass. Worstfold doing very, very well in this game. It's a high floated to half court. Gas Gaskin was the flyer, couldn't take it. The kick comes out of defence. It was by Hogg. Now a chance for Dwayne Lamb. Lamb with a long kick. Lindidding from the centre of the pack. Now a chance Lockyer. Oh, good play by all day to tap it away when Lockyer looked like getting clear. Play on now, said the umpire. It's Gaskin. Hand pass over the top. A chance for Lockyer now from 45 metres. He fires a goal. It's close. Footscray lead by behind, as you can see. Person over the ball, socket off the ground by Worsfold. It's marked by Davies. So Davies, who sent them forward last time, does so again towards half forward. Ill directed kick. Worsfold read it well, just drifting across in front of the pack. Boots it back towards the grandstand wing. O'Connell put his body in. Well played, O'Connell taken high, surely. And he'll get the free kick. Ironical cheers from the crowd. Here, Dennis. Haven't forgotten last week. Dean Turner took his eyes off the ball. Over the top went McPherson. O'Connell in desperate trouble. Back comes Turner. He could make amends. Rance falls over. Over his head. Nondescript football. Well played though by Foster down to Royal. A high kick. And the man Marashenko and he takes the mark. Big Alex is away. This is Miles. Tries to have a bounce. Long to Barrett. Put him in trouble. Nicely, Adrian Barrage. Great poise across half back. Towards centre field. Should be marked by Hogg and is. Hogg juggling that one. I like him out of the Western Oval, Matthew Hogg. Moves it towards the outer side wing. Cousins up in front. Colm with the chance behind. Colm up, showed courage. Courage again. Tidies up to Rance. Rance on his own half back line. The hand pass. Lucky it came across to Worsfold. They have the numbers. Worsfold goes out wide, main wearing. Enormous pressure being put on the Eagles players by Footscray. They're having a real go. Main wearing to half forward. The ball fisted on. Here's Doug Hawkins. Now let's see. You can see some of the brilliant skills of Hawkins. The left foot chip pass across. This finds Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick to centre wing. Main wearing again with the short haircut. Oh, good mark. They're very, very strong overhead. He's halfway between centre wing and half forward. The leads on by O'Connell. He couldn't take it, but he butters up after it. He's got it. Oh, tackle now. How will the umpire... Well, in fact, he calls play on the umpire. I said I thought he might have played a free kicker in the back, and they're paying the out of bounds. A little compromise. But... It's on half forward flank for the Eagles. Scott against all day. Scott or taps it over the back. That's good attacking play, that by Scott. Well, Gaslip gets shoved out of the way. Players going in very, very hard. Socket off the ground. Up towards full forward. Glenn Glendinning's there. Tries to shuffle it out. Still going in after it. Ross Glendinning. Is this goal number four? It was brilliant play. And he has, in fact, hit the post. So, what brilliant play that was. Yes, he's brilliant in the air and on the ground as well, Ross Glendinning. He tackles well, chases hard, and always gives a good contest. Michael Ford. Strands down side. Hawkins up in front, knocked away by Hugo. Fitzpatrick knocks it towards the boundary line. It's out of bounds, and we've got to throw it. Early days in this second term. 20 and a half minutes remaining. Boundary throw in, almost on the 50-meter line. The attacking line for the Eagles. All day wins it down. To a nest of Eagles, though. This is Hugo. Pulls it back across his body. That was far too casual. Missed by Wallace. An opportunity behind, though, for Amir. Amir hooks it down towards full forward, and why not? Where's Glenn Dinning? Up, couldn't take the mark. O'Connell dragged off it. McGuinness was the tackler. This is Gastiv. Here's Danger. Gastiv back towards full forward. Baxter's in front. Well played. Gets it across towards Eppleston. Good shepherd from Hogg. Eppleston searching hand pass to McGuinness. McGuinness drives it around the outer side, intended for Wallace. Too much carry. Rance is there. Rance centers the ball, intended for Ashenko. That's trust in the big fellow. Ashenko back into the forward line, but it's all Footscray at the fall of the ball. And Brian Royal, their champ, takes the mark, and he's away. Has a bounce across half back. Lays it off nicely. This is Baxter. Baxter comes along the grandstand side. Hawkins is there. Quickly back towards Royal. Now Royal's in trouble. Head down. The only way he knows, he tries to get it out. In goes Davies. That was a strong tackle. That's holding the ball. Good tackle. Umpire pays the advantage. Lamb goes to half forward. Had Lockyer marked that. It would have spelt big trouble for Footscray. Still might. Glendinning's got it. 25 metres out. Pulls it back. It looks good. Ross Glendinning gets his ball. Four goals.
Eagles to Ross Glendinning. The difference now, one goal in favour of the Eagles. Steve McPherson, oh, taken away by Eugle, was tackled very, very high. Play on, said the umpires. The kick comes down towards half-forward. Main wearing beautiful use of the body. Good tackle, though, by Foster. Here's a chance for, for McGuinness. He got it to Colnook, but in the meantime, it was a free kick. It will go back to Chris Mainwaring on half-back flank. Eagles starting to look better now. Ashenko underneath that one couldn't take the mark. Michael O'Connell comes in to back him up. Oh, straight under the legs of Lamb. Ashenko's there again. Young Darren Davies tries to take it away from him. It's on centre wing now with the little fella there. As he gives it across Royal to Wallace. who seemed to dislocate his thumb in the first quarter of this match. Ashenko. Oh, no, it's Zanotti in fact. Over to Rance. Rance hooks it back. It's all day. Takes the mark to Royal. Oh, he'll better get rid of this quickly. It's a wobbly. I'll kick the half board. A shot back straight to the hands of Ashenko. And that could be 50 metres. In fact, it will be against Cousins. And Ashenko will come right down, in fact, over the centre of the ground. He's almost down towards centre half board. And big Alex Ashenko started off an interchange as he transfers this ball off. Beautiful pass. Great lead by Glenn Dinning. And the distance here is only 40 metres. And Glendinning is in magnificent form, but what a great pass by Ashenko. Glendinning's already kicked four. I think they might have to make a move shortly. Michael Ford playing on Ross Glendinning. Oh, ordinary looking kick that from the Eagles champ, but he hooks it through for a behind. Yes, Ross stabbed at that one. Huh? He didn't uh, settle down and kick through the ball. He's a magnificent kicker of the ball, but not on that occasion. It's Patrick in short. This is all day. Four goals to Ross Glendinning. Beasley has two at the other end. All forwards are prominent. Pushing the back to Laidley. Not forthcoming. Knocked out of there by Proden. Hawkins close to the boundary line. Carries it out. Another boundary thrown out there. Michael O'Connell. Well-earned break. Brennan in the foreground. Carrying an injury. Schenko works his way to the front. Cousins does nicely. Turner gets it out. Barrage, was he taken high? Colnook goes in. Maybe he was. Ashenko socks it off the ground, but there's going to be a free kick, I think. And Colnook will get the free kick and all that congestion. Colnook, the defensive side of centre wing. Puts Gray needing a goal. Kicks towards half forward. Foster over the top. Couldn't take the mark. The numbers again favour the Eagles and near to Turner. Turner back towards the centre field area. Fitzpatrick knocks it away. Coming through strongly out there was Hogg, but it's going to be a free kick, and it will be taken by Lockyer. Lockyer with this ball. Afterwards, centre wing. Miles leaps a mile in the air. Ford takes the mark with poise, lays it off to McPherson. McPherson on the grandstand wing, and the mark is taken by Simon, who obviously is on a long lead. I say, I wonder what Miles was doing right down there. He obviously followed Beasley down there. Beasley actually kicking this ball from centre wing. He might have been getting a bit lost up there. Oh, there's a good mark to Cousins in front of the pack now. Probably too far out to score a goal. He'll have to kick from approximately, well, 48 metres into the breeze. So it will take a very good kick from there. But... Uh, a goal here would be quite handy for Footscray because the Eagles have been doing all the attacking in the past five or six minutes. Just under 16 minutes to go in this quarter. Here's the kick from Cousins. He tries to guide that one and didn't kick through the ball and put it through for a behind. The move has been made at the other end of the ground. Eppleston is now playing on Ross Glendinning and Michael Ford's been moved out to the half-back line. Well, one goal the difference in favour of the Eagles. Very evenly contested match. Nothing in this. Darren Davies. Caught to Col Colnell. The young players combining there. There's Worsfold has been an excellent player. Out to Lamb. Wayne Lamb. Normally a humorous kick getter. There's Colnell again. He's really been putting himself in. He did well to hook that back, but it's an Eagles mark. And it could be 50 metres, this. In fact, that's Murray Rance with the ball. It's not 50 metres. Murray Rance, uh, Formerly, former Footscray player, of course, there's all day, and Fitzpatrick both going for the thump, and eventually the ball is forced over the line. This is halfway between centre wing and half forward for Footscray. Boundary throw in. Cousins wins it backward of the pack. Lamb knocked away by Royal. Breaks a tackle. Well played 
Will goes down towards full forward. Beasley. Beasley takes the mark. Only about 15 metres out on a 45 degree angle. And a chance to bring up his third. Excellent use of the body by Simon Beasley. As we've seen the replay. Leans against Miles and at the last moment moves across and takes an easy chest mark. But great use of the body. And need this one. Beasley, a study in concentration. Scores a level. 36 apiece. Just under 14 minutes remaining in the term. Mashenko wins it down. Scrambled forward by Wallace. This is McPherson. Gets it across to Royal. Good combination. Cousins back to Royal. Well outside half forward. Needs some support. Twisting and turning Royal. Long down towards Beasley. This will be interesting. Knocked away by Miles. Foster. That's holding the ball surely. And the Eagles will get the kick. Yes, a good umpiring decision now. <laughs> And Weary trying to get 50 metres there. The umpire wasn't fooled, or dicey pass that one was. And that allows Colnook to come through and grab it. He really worked hard. Back to Patraclia, back to Colnook. Beautiful football, this by Footscray as it's hooked back towards half forward. The Shinko is the big flyer. No mark. Play on to the umpire. Kicked off the ground by Royal. It's towards half forward, but this player has been terrific. Worst bowl. He's nearly best man on the ground at the moment as he takes it away beautifully. Steady, he had no one to give it to, moves onto the right foot, looking for Gastev. Oh, there's two foot spray players. Great play, Hawkins. Hawkins, a loose man in Davies out wide. Davies takes it. Now he'll come straight up the centre with the long kick. Beasley against Miles. Beasley! Oh, great mark. He's too good for Jeffrey Miles at the moment. And Beasley, tremendous use of the body again. Three goals he's kicked with a chance for his fourth. And I think a change may be needed up that end of the ground as well. Beasley too strong there and probably a little bit too tall for Jeff Miles. Simon Beasley, a beautiful kick for goal normally. He will kick from about, uh, about 45 metres. He's kicked three. Oh, beautiful looking drop. Hunt, is it there? Yes, it is. Schenko wins it down to Turner. Puts great lead by six points. Eppleston takes the mark. Showing a lot of grit at the present time. Forward driving it towards centre wing and a strong mark is taken by Cousins. For a moment there it seemed that Footscray were getting out of their ground but they really have steady. They've bitten the bullet. They're coming back strongly. Foster. Great mark to Peter Foster. He really is a focal point at centre half forward. Michael Malthouse would love two. One at centre half back and one at centre half forward. So Foster. One more long kick. Sends it down towards full forward. Beasley outnumbered, got his hands to it. Couldn't hang on. Opportunity now. McGuinness centers the ball. Too much carry on it. Putting his body in was Wallace, and he's going to be rewarded. Well, so much science there. Wallace, in characteristic fashion, just put his body in, regardless of all else, and has won the free kick. Twice best and fairest to four four. No well, doubt about that. Yes, he did the right thing, uh, Terry Wallace. He's got his body in the right position. And Andrew Lockyer fell on top of him, right in the middle of his back. This will be a big goal. He can get it from 25 metres out. Wallace. What's he done? I think he's missed. He has. Well, he didn't want that. He continued to lead, but he changed legs, as you see on the bench. Oh, that would have been a real handy one. He played right back. Any young boy watching could see how he laid back there, and that's probably why he missed it. The Shinko. Trying hard, he's chuckled, he's chuckled a few in this corner, hasn't quite held them. Here's the, the dash of Zanotti to Yuga was a beautiful hand pass. Another long hand pass to the centre of the ground to Renstead. Renstead looking for Glendinning. Eppleston at the back, taps it away. Oh, strong work. This is Baxter comes away with the ball, but oh, gee, Footscray putting the Eagles under enormous pressure. Out wide is Barrage, and it beats him over the line, but Footscray are really playing man to man and going in particularly hard and it's unsettling a lot of the Eagles players. Importantly too, Pete, I think they've quietened the crowd. Certainly. <laughs> Which is a factor. No, it's a factor. It makes here, a isn't big it? difference and uh, the Eagles crowd are very, very hushed at the moment. It's on centre wing. There's Lamb trying to get out. Look at the way Footscray going in. Oh, under the leaves of Colnock. Renstead to Lamb. Oh, Lamb gets flat towards half forward. Oh, look at that defence. Good play by all day to Colnock. He's been most impressive in this quarter. A bad pass. Don't go straight to Lamb. It was intended for Petraglia and Lamb chipped in to take the mark on centre wing. Wayne Lamb looking for options. 
present time, Footscray is simply out running the West Coast Eagles, and that's a very good mark taken there over the top by Young Hogg. Initially, he wanted to punch it away, and it sat up obligingly for him and fell into his arms. Hogg along the grandstand wing. France takes the clever mark, opposed to Cousins. Next goal is vital. France going for distance. Down towards half forward, not a well-directed kick. Footscray have got all the numbers there, over the top, taking no chances. Fitzpatrick thumps it out of bounds. Baxter shrugs, thinking perhaps he could have taken the mark. Fitzpatrick knocked it away from him. Baxter in best position to take the mark, but no damage done. Chance to regroup, get the numbers there for Footscray again, all day wide of the pack. Coming to meet the ball, McPherson. Rams dead, needs to do more in the centre. Wallace goes towards half forward. Good contest down there by Cousins to knock it away. Ashenko rides the pack. Barrage mishandles. Knocks it across, looking for support. This is Wurzfold. Wurzfold searching hand pass. Main Waring's got it. From half back, Main Waring towards centre field. Fitzpatrick comes over the top. Disciplined play. Pumps it away. The Eagles lead in all directions to the ball, though. This is Eugle. Laidley is moving into open space for him. That's the direction the kick takes. And Laidley has taken this market right half forward. Dean Laidley. Dennis set on half forward flank. He's looking for Glenn Dinning. Oh, he's under enormous pressure. Two or three players are attacking Glenn Dinning then. Fitzpatrick's done a good defensive job in this quarter. Number 42, the blonde-headed boy. There he is on the bottom of the pack, but his discipline in punching that ball when he's caught behind has really saved them three or four times in this quarter. It's about 35 metres out from the Eagles' goal, and all of a sudden they look a little bit rattled when they were getting right on top. There's Dean Turner. Oh, a hurry kick comes down towards four quarters, tapped over the top and through for a behind to the Eagles. So, one goal the difference in favour of the Bulldogs and they're doing particularly well. Seven and a half minutes to go in this quarter. There's Fitzpatrick. Oh, a handball over the top to Cole Nook, who's been very, very impressive. Cole Nook to centre wing. Oh, courageous attempt was by Davis. McPherson's under enormous pressure, holding the ball and the Eagles crowd with the line. That was a mark to Davies, Peter, surely. He took it to and it was knocked out of his hands. Bad place to try and take that mark, or more particularly to pay it, right from the member's stand. Off hands, a chance for Eppleston behind. High kick back towards centre wing. McPherson in front, awkward bounce. Well played by Davies. Well blanketed down by Turner. Cousins on the overlap is Wallace towards half forward. Ball hangs in the air, Zanotti knocks it away. It was over the shoulder of the Footscray player, but it was inadvertent. This is Eugle. Eugle has the ball on centre wing. Goes down towards right half forward. Good kick, and the mark is taken out there by Lamb. Lamb in short, intended for Laidley, who showed courage to knock it on. Laidley close to the boundary line, confronted by Petraglia. And McGuinness content to run it across the boundary line. So we've got the makings of a good football match here. Interested spectator. 6-7-5-7. McGuinness tries to go through. Knocked on by all day. Cronin to McGuinness. Knocks his feet somewhere. Waterman tackled him. And the ball is down across the boundary line. And the players earning their keep. They're slow to get up. 6-7-5-7. Just over six minutes remaining. I think Mick Malthouse has really done his homework on these Eagles players. They are a brilliant side if they're allowed to be. And their Footscray players putting enormous pressure on. Man on man, when they're behind on, in defence, punching it away. And but for Glenn Dinning, Dinning up forward, they're struggling a little bit on the forward line, the Eagles. All day. There's Johnny Anir who hasn't done a lot so far. Still on, uh, well, halfway between centre wing and half forward for the Eagles, and the bounce down will take place. Mick Malthouse on left of screen, and young Ted Whitten on right. I'd be quite happy with the situation so far, because at one stage in this quarter, the Eagles really looked as though they were going. Here's Eugle, receives from Lockyer. Eugle to half on Miles! Oh, the big play! Was it paid? No, said the umpire. Renstead, a hurried snap at the goals. And he has put it through from behind, but what a big attempt to mark this. Yeah, that's a great leap on Miles. But he couldn't have held on to that one. That's all weak too, isn't it? Yes, he didn't use anyone as a stepladder there. But he has been moved from the back line down to the forward line. Like you, Bernie. There's Fitzpatrick. Grandstand side. Off hands, a chance in front for Davies. No support. Wallace should have shepherded. As a result, the kick just tumbles away. Picked 
up by Gastiv. Can the Eagles get a late goal? Long down towards full court, Glendinning. Was he pushed out of the contest? I thought so. Back goes Fitzpatrick. They're very Glendinning conscious down there. Ford gets it across to Royal. Royal in the back pocket. Brings it along the grandstand side. Ashenko, simply too tall over McPherson. Alex Ashenko, long towards half forward. Again, miles around it. They're crashing in. Players at both sides. Gastiv go anywhere. Hogg's kick comes towards Grandstand Wake. Going through Zanotti. Ashenko over the ball. Well played Ashenko. Death deflection. Wide to Scott. Into the path of Miles. And Miles takes the mark about 45 metres from goal. A chance to put the Eagles back in front. Jeff Miles back from the rarefied atmosphere. Looks a little paler. <laughs> Not normally a goal kicker. What will he do with this one? It's a pretty good kick off the boot. That one point the difference. This time in favour of the West Coast Eagles, and we're seeing a very, very hard, tough contest at the moment. It could, could, could really go either way. Two very, very evenly contested teams. Here's Peter Foster right down from centre half forward. Geez, contested really well tonight. Towards half forward former teammate Murray Rance, those two players interchanged between centre half forward and centre half back last year. Oh, another great mark. The top mark again by Foster. Is he a good player over here? Peter Foster is down on centre wing. He's looking for that long raking drop punt. Doesn't quite get onto it. It's towards half forward though. Well, it's a Noddy or a Shinko. In fact, it's a Shinko, the big fella. He's taken a couple of nice marks in this quarter. Shinko to Miles again as the big leaper. Can't take it all. That was high on Cronin. The umpire calls play on as Phil Cronin comes away from defence. And a long kick to Beasley. He's got two men to beat on that occasion. Worst fold has been an outstanding player in this match. Shuffles it out looking for Lamb. And Twain Lamb, he nearly got run over. Now it's a chance for Petraglia. Angelo Petraglia. Oh, a dangerous hand pass to Cronin. But he comes in again, Petraglia. He's got it. Hooks it back on the left forward towards the pocket. Still in play, said the umpire. Pashenko well, brings it back to Lockyer. Andrew Lockyer, wide. Will find Zanotti, who can't quite take the mark of the ball. Now, was it off his boot? No, it wasn't. In fact, it will be just out of bounds. Half forward flank for the Bulldogs. 207 remaining in the term. The Eagles lead by one point. Shinko goes up, wins it down nicely. So that was a great right knock. Barrage across to Rance. The Eagles combining well across half back. Beautiful kick from Rance. Miles had a decision to make. He went it for it to pitch. Now a chance for Ford. Back towards half forward. Lamb is up, tries to knock it away. Dean Turner was pushed in the back, I thought. He'll get the free kick. Late whistle, but he's going to get it. Frankly, uh, getting into his back there. And Dean Turner from half back. Plays on, kicks with his left foot towards centre field. Fitzpatrick in from the side, knocks it down. Gastip's got it. Into a nest of Eagles. Somehow the ball finishes up with Cronin, but it's a free kick to an Eagles player in there for a tackle too high. A wayward arm connected with Gastip, who lays the ball into the path of Glendinning, and that's simply too easy. Glendinning. Well, he's too hand. strong again, Dennis, isn't he? Yeah. Eppleston's the man marking him this time. Ross Glendinning, a chance to bring up his fifth. Ablett got, what, eight? Last Monday at the MCG against Richmond. In the first half. Yep. Glendinning goes down towards full forward. Hands and it trickles through for a behind. So Glendinning remains on four. Simon Beasley, for that matter, has got four at the other end. But Glendinning's had more opportunities. Simon has made the most of his. So two points our margin. Fitzpatrick to bring it back into play. 47 seconds of this quarter to go. As the ball is forced to the boundary line by Doug Hawkins and Troy Hugel. And over the line. It's on half forward flank for the Eagles. The Bulldog defence will be trying desperately to stop them scoring a goal just before half time. Two points in favour of the Eagles at the moment. There's Hugel, good skills, but he's forced over the line and out of bounds again. And a very, very good contest, this young supporter braving the elements. A good night though here after a fair bit of rain in Perth in the last day or two but conditions absolutely perfect. There's Eugle, a quick kick out of the pack towards full forward. Shuffled away, here's a chance. Oh, Renstead was linked. Play on, said the umpire. He goes back in after it again. Murray Renstead, but there's the siren. It beats the Eagles. And at half-time here at the Wacker, the Eagles lead by two points. 6-9, 45 to Footscray, 6-5. 
6-7-43. Great defence there by Terry Wallace. I thought Burnett would get back on the boot. Winstead, will intents and purposes, had an open goal awaiting him. He stumbled. And we saw Wallace get there and smother that ball. They've been very desperate in defence, Footscray. A uh, magnificent smother by Wallace, which really made the difference in the end between a goal and no score at all. But, uh, the Footscray defence have been really throwing themselves at the ball. They've tightened up on Ross Glendinning. And uh, Footscray should be pretty happy with this first half. Just checking some of the numbers then. Worsfold, 11 kicks, 4 hand passes. Gast of 10 and 7. Barrich, 9 and 2. Lamb, 9 and 1. And for the Bulldogs, Royal, 12 and 5. He's been very active. Foster, 10 and 4. Wallace, 8 and 3. Half time at the WACA ground. And we find the Eagles leading by 2 points. 6 9 to 6 7. And on again. Footscray came into tonight's clash with the Eagles with their 88 record reading two wins, two losses. Hardly the type of record to enthuse over. The man in the hot seat tonight is Bulldog coach Mick Malthouse, a man who became a league coach at the tender age of 30, having had no previous coaching experience. I was very lucky. Um, I think everyone's ambition, well, most players' ambition is to coach at some level, and um, I had a couple of offers from South Australia and Tasmania, and, of course, back at the local side in, in Ballarat. But uh, the opportunity arose when, when Bluey Hampshire resigned at Footscray in January, and uh, Shane O'Sullivan the then general manager of Footscray asked me do I want the job? Well, obviously you just jump at opportunities to coach at league level. While Mick was obviously pleased to get that opportunity, he knew it would be tough. It was, and it still is, with his mind ticking over all the time on tactics, improvements and the game in general. You go to bed thinking about football and you wake up thinking about football. And that's the commitment attitude that I would like to think that most of my players go, go with anyway. Football is such a short-term thing. Uh, particularly coaching, you don't know when you're going to... Uh, uh, meet the sword so to speak so I guess the idea is to put in as many hours and as, and as much effort as you possibly can in the brief time that you're involved in the game. Now 34 and still a young man in his profession Malthouse and his wife Nanette have four young children ranging from 3 to 11 but he has no problems combining the roles of father and coach. The kids now come to the football so they get a chance to see what their dad's all about. Uh, I make the most of my time after the football season, which is brief, I suppose, when you look at the, the, the seasons, the way they're going at the moment. But uh, no, I, I'm making sure that uh, the time with the family is, when I've got the time, is to put in as best effort as I possibly can with them as well. The last two seasons have seen the Bulldogs promise a lot without delivering, especially disappointing after their 1985 season when they missed a grand final berth by just a couple of kicks. It was disappointing, obviously, to fall away like we did. We missed out by a game. Last year we missed out by two points. We're, we're round about there, but we just need, I think, a couple of, uh, a couple of breaks to go our way to um, have everyone up and running. You see yourself coaching a footy team in 20 years? Well, I ask myself nearly every Saturday night, um, particularly after a loss, because you, you, you know, I, I suppose I've certainly taken a lot harder than I did as a player. Um, the pressures that you bring home with you, are they, are they worth it? Because you'd hate to sort of put the pressure on, you know, the, the kids and your, and your wife. Because uh, they cop enough at school as it is. And it gets back to that thing I said before, uh, are you committed or are you just involved in football? And as long as I'm committed to football, I would like to think I can stay in the game. If I'm just there as an involvement only, I think uh, uh, not only will the team I'm coaching suffer, but I'll suffer because I just can't give them my all, and that's the time to bow out. Tonight's game is a part of the Elders IXL 1988 BFL Premiership season. I think he'd be smiling at the present time, Mick Malthouse, but with coaches, it's hard to know. On the Australian Television Network, it's another big weekend of sport, another big week of sport, in effect. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock on Saturday Night Replay, the Magpies take on the Blues and the Cats meet the Bombers. At 2 o'clock this Sunday, can the Demons register their first win at the Sydney Cricket Ground against the Sydney Swans? Then, next Friday night, it's North Melbourne against the West Coast Eagles at the MCG. That's 9.30 next Friday here on 7. And a reminder, be watching at 8.30, Sunday and Monday, when Sophia Loren stars in the compelling two-part miniseries. 18 possessions last week, McGuinness, but uh, Brian Royal's been really the busy player for Footscray so far.
And the other one is Terry Wallace, who also, I think he dislocated his finger in the first quarter. Dennis? Probably shading, Renstead. The start of the second half. Bounds coming from umpire Mitchell. Yashenko hooks it behind. McPherson in trouble and passes it high, taken by Cronin. Hurried kick towards half forward. Good contest is given by Davies there, knocking the ball free. Colnook in trouble. Cousins trying to thread it through. Wasn't so subtle the second time. This is Main Waring running back towards the pocket though. Hooks it around the outer side. Barrage is in front out there. The ball spills out of bounds. That defensive kick to beat Barrage over the line. There's uh, Adrian Barrage. Is on the half forward line, four foot's great, two points the difference. The Eagles in front, as we've said right from the start, very even contest. There's McPherson, gets it further afield, and the long floating kick comes towards full forward. But the man in front is Lockyer, playing off Beasley, shoves him out of the way. Lockyer towards half back. This is John Anir. Anir with a little chip towards the half forward line. In fact, it's more towards the centre, the hand pass was from Renstead back to Anir. Anir towards half forward. Up they go. It's tried, trying to fist it away was Hogg. Here's Glenn Dinning. A chance for goal number five. was an absolute shocker on the left foot. Eppleston hotly pressing him. The young against the experienced. Oh, the experienced one out. Great play, Glenn Dinning. He has a shot at goal as he put it through. Oh! Marked by Fitzpatrick just before it was floating. Well, it might have gone the wrong side of the post anyway. Over to Hawkins. Back it comes to Foster. Foster back to Hawkins. Brilliant skills by Doug Hawkins. Onto the left foot, it's a wobbly one though. And he brings it round the centre wing and over the line and out of bounds. But he's just watching Doug Hawkins. Not quite emphatic enough about what he's doing out there at the moment. A little hesitation. Yeah, he may be uh, a little uh, lackadaisical tonight, Doug Hawkins. He's not really going at it uh, with the usual flair that we see with, from Doug Hawkins. Cole Nook has been an excellent player. Dean Turner to Laidley. You can see once again the pressure being put on. Peter Foster's there. Here's the man they want to really fire. That's McGuinness. McGuinness on the right foot towards half foot. Easy mark dropped by Renstead. It's taken away by Steve McPherson. Strong tackle. And that is being held to. Is that Murray Renstead on the bottom of that pack? Yes, it is. Uh, Murray Rance, I should say. Former Footscray player. Ashenko ball hits the deck in they go after it and uh, in fact the umpire said that no attempt was made to shuffle that out and it will be a free kick Woodsgrave's way and the West Coast Eagles supporters won't like this Angelo Petraglia is a beautiful kick he will kick for goal from about 45 metres and a chance to put the Bulldogs in front at the moment they trail by two behinds Angelo Petraglia has already kicked one as I said, a left foot uh, drop punt is normally an excellent kick. On this occasion, it's very... The Bulldogs lead by four points. All day wins it down. Taken by Turner. Towards half forward goes the kick. He's been a good player, Baxter. Surely he was taken high. And he'll get the free kick. No doubt about that one. Baxter attacking the ball. He's a fine defender. Every time to see him play, seems to get better as he drives it out towards the half forward line for Footscray. Well fisted away by Zanotti. Davies grabbed around the leg. That was bad luck for the Eagles because the ball was running with them. Discipline was shown by Zanotti, but Davies gets the kick. Back towards full forward. Off hands. Opportunity for Royal to Colnook. Colnook gets away as easily as you like and from 25 metres out gets the goal. Well, that was simply too easy. Yeah, brilliant play by Colnook. And uh, some of these young Footscray players have really had a go at it tonight. They're not really household names, players that you would know. But Colnook showing great skills there was able to dodge and weave and in the end kicked a very easy goal here it is kicked long into the Footscray forward line Royal gets a hand pass out Colin Newt dodging and weaving it's finally steadying and putting it through the middle for Footscray as we saw concern on the bench the West Coast Eagles 8-7 6-9 all day of the second attempt Eagles needing the next goal Ramstead was held without it he'll take the free kick from the partisan crowd. Generally, though, the Bulldogs have been bustling in there, working harder all day. Carried out of it, Glendinning, and Laidley, Laidley, gets boots a ball, it travels about five metres, Gaston in trouble, Glendinning, is looking for support through the legs of O'Connell, Baxter puts his body in, the umpire will ball it up. 
Well, that's not uncommon for uh, Darren Baxter to be putting his body in. Tremendous goer, real team man, Darren Baxter. There he is, number 35. Just over 20 minutes to go in this quarter. The Bulldogs have started brilliantly. It's on that half-forward line, though, for the Eagles. Oh, here they come again. Now a chance for Dean Turner onto the left foot. He has a pot shot at the goals. It won't quite make it. Fitzpatrick's kept it in. A good mark, that. It looked like a certain point. But Linton Fitzpatrick, a very disciplined game tonight. Hasn't had many kicks, but, uh, boy, he's punched that away time and time again as he brings it towards half-back. The mark was dropped there by Greg Eppleston. He's another one of those real stickers. He and Darren Baxter, two of the best stoppers in league football. Mick Malthouse and young Ted Whitten be delighted with their performance so far. 8-7, plays 6-9 all day against Scott. All day gets it to the ground. Here's a chance for Dean Turner as he brings it up to Glenn Dinning. He's the flyer. Couldn't take it and they'll probably run it through and they do as the goal up finally gets bowled over by Michael Ford. So that behind to the Eagles takes them on to 6-10. Puts Gray on 8-7. 46 plays 55. Nine points the difference in favour of the Bulldogs. 19-23 remaining in the term. Kick to the outer side. Hawkins the leaper. Intelligent knock on. That was intended if you don't mind. Down to Royal. Royal goes along the outer side wing. Foster out of position. Zanotti almost the mark. Bad luck for him. And the ball spills out of bounds. Ryan smile from Zanotti. Can't believe it. Thought he was held. I know. 8-7 to 6-10. Shenko and Cousins. One down by the former. McGuinness. McPherson. Has to be careful. Could have almost been a free to worst bowled out there. Needed to commit more there. Steve McPherson. Despite the fact it was going out of bounds. So they've got a boundary throw. Shenko and Cousins. John and Ian playing a stopping role on McGuinness. Uh... Doing it well too. This is Barrich breaking away. Goes towards half forward with a kick. Looks great with the numbers all day. He's played very well tonight. Goes towards the outer side. And the strong mark is taken in the midst of that pack by the best aerialist on the ground. No question. Peter Foster. He drives it down towards half forward. Intended for Beasley. Not enough carry. Rance. Courage. Puts his body in. Takes the mark. Standing in front of the pack. Main wearing. Will it sit for him? Now he's in trouble. One out contest. Polnock will get the kick. He worked for it and got it. This kid, Bernie, has got class written all over him. Yeah, he's, he's uh, really shown a lot of potential, Colnew. Murray Rance, I uh, saw, had his head in his hands after that kick. Very dangerous kick across the half-back line. John Todd not looking very happy at all. Oh, about to tear his hair out, I think, after that kick. Steve McPherson, then. Let's see what he can do. This... Is a vital kick in the context of this game, and he steers it. Well, what a great start this is. 46 plays 61, so that's uh, 15 points the difference, and the Bulldogs are on fire as we see Brian Royal to Beasley. Out he comes, it's fisted away, grabbed by Cousins, a quick kick at the goals. Smothered by Zanotti as he ducks back, and he'll run it through for another behind. So now the difference is 16 points in favour of Footscray, but they have a run on, and they're playing well. Young Cole Nook. Class written all over him. There he is, Cronin, in fact, on the mark. Dean Turner. Oh, trying to punch it was Hawkins. It's taken by Eugel under pressure. Finds Laidley. Laidley from centre wing. They want a goal and they want it quickly, the Eagles, as the kick comes down to half forward. The mark's been taken by O'Connell. Hasn't had a good night. Ironical cheers from the crowd. Oh, smothered off the boot. Bad play by O'Connell. He ran far too close to the man on the mark, Darren Baxter. And that's not good football. Darren Baxter's playing on O'Connell and uh, Baxter's one of the best taggers in the business. He's made it very, very difficult for a lot of uh, forwards in the past. Half forward for Scott. This is for the Eagles. They want a goal here. The Footscray defence has been very, very tough and hard. There's Gastev shooting it out the miles and I think he's kicked it. He has. He badly needed the goal to uh, the Eagles. That's the second goal to Miles. And they get a little bit closer. Ten points of difference. But uh, Footscray really have had most of the play in this third quarter. It's the first time that the Eagles have been able to get it down onto their forward line. And Miles finished it off with a nice goal. There it is. Gastev was a player. He fed it out. And Miles finishes it off. O'Connell coming off. Brennan is on. Goal kicker Jeff Miles. 16 minutes, 13 seconds remaining in this third term. 10 points the difference. 
we said earlier, this has got the makings all day. Lamb in trouble. Scrambles a kick towards half forward. Leading in the race out there is Davies. One sense is the way they've played tonight, Footscray. They're not going to give this up easily. They sense an upset. This is Hugo Lowe. Breaks away. Back towards the full forward area. Scott the nudge. Ball carried here in his marker and spills out of bounds. Almost the mark to Scott. So we've got a boundary throw in. O'Connell. He's had a tough night, but he kicked five goals in the season's opener against Geelong at Cadinia Park and won that game. People have short memories. All day and Scott will do the ruck work. All day is in front. Scott over the top. Turner. Royal. He's worked his heart out tonight. Royal. Cronin's on the ball in there. Maybe had a point, but a moot point according to the umpire. He'll ball it up. Ryan Royal, a tremendous little player. One of the best rovers playing the game. Ten points the difference. Very, very good game of football this. We're going to have a great finish off field. There's Glenn Didding. Eppleston putting him under pressure. Allows his teammate Petraglia to bring the ball to the centre of the ground. Cousins to Hawkins. Back it comes. It's a chance now for Murray Renstead. He didn't have it. It was grabbed. And the umpire said exactly that. And will it be reversed? It could possibly have been reversed. Umpire Peter be. Carey racing in. Is he going to? No, he's not. Murray Rinstead from the centre of the ground. Looks towards Bigashenko. Oh, pissed it away again. But here's Turner over the top. Bigashenko. Oh, he loses it. There was a big chance here. Matthew Hogg, brilliantly done by the young fellow as he brings it around the boundary line and straight over the line. Good defensive play. The defence has been fantastic for Footscray tonight. They're a really tight-knit, desperate bunch. Those young players, Matthew Hogg, Stephen Colnook, Darren Davies, really impressive. There's Troy Eugle. He kicks it high. Out. Where's Glenn Dinning? There he is, centre of the back, and he's marked it. Oh, yes. A good mark to the captain of the Eagles, and they need a goal here. He's already kicked four goals for the game. He's missed a couple of easy ones. But Ross Glenn Dinning is only 30 metres out, directly in front. A chance for goal number five. There it is, no doubt, straight through the middle. And Ross Glenn Dinning with his 50 he winner, that one much more popular. Four points the difference. The Eagles clawing their way back into this. Eugle, who's been a valuable player, goes down towards half forward. Putting the race out there is Barrage. 14-40, remaining in this turn. Barrage wheels onto his right foot. Good-looking kick. Glendinning again. Ross Glendinning, probably along with Stephen Kernahan, Greg Williams and Paddy Lockett, they would rank, I think, as the four most influential players in the performances of their sides in this competition. Every time it's gone down there, the hearts have been in the mouths of Footscray supporters. Great kick. Six goals to Ross Glendinning. Yes, and that's the value of getting the ball out of the middle quickly. The uh, forward line was wide open, and Ross Glendinning had plenty of room to lead into. They weren't able to crowd him up, as they have in the past, with all day falling back and knocking the ball away. Here's a kick for goal from Ross Glendinning. And he really went at that confidently. OK, so this is the contract now. Footscray can't let the Eagles have the next goal. The crowd sensing the Eagles working their way on top. All day opposed to Ashenko. All day wins it wide. Colnook ran into trouble. This is Renstead. Shrugs a tackle with determination. Swings it out wide. It's knocked away by Gaster from Hawk. Crashing in down there was Hawkins. Gaster, great poise, Gaster. Set is the ball. Now an opportunity for Miles. He's already got two miles. He kicks from about 35 metres out. It looks good. It's a and a bit of mouthing off going on there between Miles and his opponent, Michael Ford, number 45 and number 6 for the Eagles. Ashinko's made a big difference at those centre bounces too. Here's Renstead again. He's having a good quarter. A high floater up towards the half forward line. Oh! Was it a push-out or a mark? In fact, play on, said the umpire, as Gastiv took it. I thought it was either a bit of a push by Ross Glendinning or a mark, and the umpire, I don't know whether he played the advantage there or not. I think he called play on, Peter. Well, I, I thought he was going to pay it, and then he allowed Gastiv to run on. There's Cole Nook. Good night by him, Davies. A touch of the fumbles. The only young player, though, as the ball is forced over the line. Now, the umpire will say... That was in the back of the field for Darren Davies, and it is, and a few things being thrown over the fence, which is 
shows an absolute lack of intelligence by those people concerned. It's on centre winger pushing the back True. by all day. The umpire let it go. McPherson off the ground, still going. Oh, beautiful smother by Main Wearing. Oh, there's Benston, who's really picked up his game in this quarter. Hand pass out wide. Finds Rance. Rance brings it towards half four. The Eagles have got into another gear. They're looking very, very dangerous. There's, oh, there's Gastiff receiving from Glendinning. A chip pass across. This could be another one coming up. There's the kick. 77 plays 62. So that's now 15 points in favour of the West Coast Eagles. Zashenko has really thrown himself into those bounces. Terry Wallace couldn't take it. There's Big Alex as he gets it across to Eugle towards half. Well, that's a good mark. And uh, obviously would have to be paid to Hogg. A very impressive player, young Matthew Hogg. Towards centre wing all day, tries to palm it away, Ashenko doing a power of work, gets it to a near, towards half forward goes the kick, to Mark, and it's Zeno Tatsaris is on the ground, playing on Miles, he gives it to Hawkins, Hawkins, off oh, further field, great play by Worsfold, who was best on the ground in the first half, picks it off the ground, here's Tatsaris again trying to pick it up, gets his kick to the ball, good play by the defender, and heads to the line, and out of bounds, half-forward flank for the West Coast Eagles. Not the sort of night for an ice cream, I wouldn't have thought, Dennis. No. Chris Gray have got to make a decision here. Otherwise, they could get licked. They need the next goal, certainly. When Dunning's over the ball, Brennan tries to scramble it out. And will have a ball up. They've got into themselves into another gear, haven't they, in the past five yep. or six minutes? Sensing they're in trouble. I think Murray Renstead was playing for his career in the middle. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he got the message. He's really got on top of Wallace. So far in this term, he's had six possessions, Renstead. Cousins hooks it around the corner. Worsfold battling out there. McPherson. It's another contest, a second effort from McPherson. It wasn't forthcoming, but Baxter did well. Davies out wide to Royal. Royal on centre wing, goes long towards half forward. Over the top, Rance takes a very good mark, but there's going to be a foot... Yes, a foot spray free kick in there. It'll go to Foster. Foster was pushed in the back, I think, going to that contest. There goes the high kick down towards full forward. Beasley out number two on one. It's knocked away by the defence. Man, Waring gets back and forces it behind. Pushing the back, I think, Dennis. better the Eagles in this past 10 minutes or so up towards half forward it goes oh one-handed attempt by Hawkins and the brilliance of Doug Hawkins he was able to hook that one in he kicks wide Ryan Royals out there waiting at the back he's got it too off goes the little rover ducks around onto the left foot he'll look for Beasley Beasley in front against Lockyer well played Lockyer it's fisted away but Guinness very very quiet night Tony McGuinness now he's got it back it comes to Cousins play on said the umpire this is Angelo Petraglia Back further afield to Foster. Oh, gee, that'll bring rain, that one. A high one by Foster. <laughs> Billy hit his uh, teammate on the head. In they go after it. This is Cronin. The Eagles really going in and backing each other up now. And it's on half-back flank. Well, now, all of a sudden, the pressure is on Footscray. 11-11 plays 9-8. Two goals, three the difference. The bounce about 35 minutes out from the Footscray goal. Foster fits it down. Now it's a chance for Rance, who's had a good quarter. Ashenko has been excellent for Rutten. He gets it across to Barrett. Barrett's a long kick towards half forward. Up in front, Gaster. Classical mark that one. Really stretching himself, Johnny Gaster. He liked it. Gaster from 50 metres out. Long kick. Right to the teeth of goal. Scott is up. Off-hands an opportunity for Miles. It's knocked away by Gonzalez. Out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. Good move by John Todd. Miles onto the forward line. Suddenly... A twin attack. Miles taking some of the heat off Glenn Dinning. Scott goes up from behind all day. Eugle packs it towards the goal line. Baxter in close attendance. And it's a behind. The freeze has dropped a little, I'd venture to say. He 
Eagles will go to the scoring end of the final term. All day. Around the other side wing. McPherson's in front. Almost the mark. Knocks it out intelligently. Well played by McPherson to Davies. Down towards right half forward goes the kick. In front is McGuinness. The shadow in here does well again and gets it out of bounds. Frustrating night for Tony McGuinness. Boundary throw in coming up. Right half forward for the Dogs. And we have 6.35 remaining in the term. Wearing him like a glove. Look at that for discipline by an ear. Schenko and Cousins will do the ruck work out there. Cousins works his way to the front. Schenko just touched it down to Zanotti. Right of the pack a chance for Barrage off the ground. Down towards half forward. All day he's tried very hard. Hawkins who's improving. Hogg appear to be held without it. Barrage comes in. Despite the tackle. Got it across to Brennan. Brennan gives it away. Hogg's got it. Dragged down well by Gaston. McPherson gets it across to Hawkins. Over the top to Wallace. They need him to lift. Wallace goes long down towards half forward. Cousins is there. And he takes a strong mark. Now Cousins should move this very quickly because Beasley's down there one out. Out he comes. Front. Oh, Block is doing an excellent job down there now. But it's grabbed by Petraglia. He ducks around on the left foot. Loses it. Could have been holding the ball. Hand pass. Back it comes to Cousins. He straightens up. 35 metres out. They need a goal. He's off line. A bad kick out by Cousins. And it allows Wayne Waring. Oh, he's lost it again. Oh, he's good enough to get back and get it to Laidley, though. Laidley loses it. A lot of pressure on him now as Cousins goes in after him. Oh, clever tap on by Clam. They are. Oh, they're backing up beautifully. Rance, Zanotti, back to Rance. Good defensive play, this by the Eagles. As Rance brings it to Dean Turner, he drops a sitter. Now Turner ducks back onto the left foot. A high, wobbly one. Bugles there. Over the back, it's twisted away by Baxter as the players charge in after it. There's Miles trying to hook it out all day, finds Wallace a lot of pressure on the players out there at the moment, Foster has been an excellent player to McPherson, McPherson kicks it long, Beasley was held up in front he goes, over the back, a chance for Petraglia, he's got it to the little rover let's see if he can get away with it, a hand pass, finds Cousins, now it's a hurried snap shot at the goals for Footscray by Colnell but in fact it is hit the behind post, so it will be deemed to be out of bounds and a throw in to take place deep in that forward pocket for Footscray. And they need goals and they need them quickly. Yes, four and a half minutes remaining in the term. Can they make something of this? Ashenko is in front. Cousins is there. Ashenko, wide of the pack. Vibratore gets it across towards Cole Nook, but pulls it around across his body and it sticks through for a behind that time. Attacking that far behind post. Lockyer, the umpire hadn't put the flag down, so it'll come back to Lockyer. Only a technicality, but Lockyer will get another kick. 11-12 the Eagles, 9-9 Footscray. The latter stages of the third term. This is worse for all who's been a star tonight. It's been a star this season. Had a down day at Victoria Park, but a very influential player as he drives around the outer side. Miles could have been paid the mark. Yes, it is paid. Uh, not happy about that, but Miles very strong in the air. Classical duel between that pair. Miles goes long towards half forward. Knocked away by Hawkins. Out wide. Leading in the race out there is Gastiv. Look out for some magic. Now he's in trouble. Slung out of it by Hawk. Picked up by Davies. Gastiv did well to come back and smother. Deflects across that to Hawkins who breaks away from half back. They can't penetrate half forward at the moment. Up goes Cousins. Mark is not paid. Rance comes away with it. Long back towards half forward goes the kick. It clears the pack. Gastiv behind. Hawk puts his body in. He's playing by Gastiv. And the umpire will ball it up. Well, a couple of times tonight, what appeared to be clear marks haven't been paid. The young Matthew Hogg there on screen was runner-up. Equal runner-up, in fact, in the under-19s best and fairest for Footscray last year. So Footscray doing the right thing. They're playing young fellows, and that's the way to get the side up. There's Glenn Dinning. Grabbed it out of the ruck. I said there was a push out and it will go down to David all day on halfback flank. Footscray really have been outplayed in the past 10 minutes and they have to get one or two quick goals to get themselves back in this game. There's Wolf Horsfold, who's been a tremendous player tonight as he brings it towards half foot. Oh, the big fly was by Scott. Couldn't take it. Out of defence it comes. There's Liberatore to Wallace. Seemed to damage a finger in the first quarter. I really think that's affected him tonight. Grabbed there by Foster. Now a chance. Beasley and Lockyer. Oh, Lockyer's gone right on top of Beasley. That might be his position, Dennis. Uh, 
fullback? Against a full forward like Simon Beasley, I think so. But mind you, Foster made a pretty hard, that sort of kick. Yes, and Simon Beasley hasn't really been leading no. enough in this quarter. 2.17 on the term remains. Main wearing breaks away with Dash. To the grandstand side. Good kick into the path of Laidley. That was centimetre perfect. Two of the youngsters combining there. Main wearing and Laidley. Laidley on centre wing. Wants to centre the ball. That's an ill-directed kick. Liberatore takes the mark. So the clock now. An enemy of Footscray. Liberatore has the ball at half back. Kicks towards half forward. McPherson. Mark that. Eugle. It's a hand pass across to support. Brennan comes away, pumps it back into the forward line. Glendinning already with six to his credit. Leads back in the race. Scott coming up, Glendinning to Gastiv. Gastiv, well tackled down there. That was a great tackle by Fitzpatrick. Coming through was Eppleston. Paddles it towards the boundary line. One sense there was danger there. Gastiv thought he was through, you can tell. But he was playing. A great camera shot of that is John Gastiv. Shows a... He's disgusted himself for not being able to get through. It's still on that half forward line, though, for the Eagles. It's a push in the back, and it will be a free kick, and it will go to John Anir. Now, Anir is not a long kick, generally, of a football, and he will have to kick from approximately 50 metres. So well, he looks as though he, because he's not a long kick, it looks so he might go to the torpedo punt kick here, as you can see. No, eventually it's a drop punt, and he, I think he might have made a liar of me. Emerging with the ball, Liberatore gets it across to support. It comes into the forward line from Royal, outnumbered Beasley. Chance behind Zanotti. Now to 30 seconds in the term. And the Eagles clear it again, this time to Miles on the outer side. Try as they might, Footscray can't get a late goal. They stopped as if shot midway through the term. Kick towards half forward, off hands Glendinning. What a game he's played. The young Laidley, player of great promise. Laidley hooks it down towards the pocket. Eugles in front, knocked away by Fitzpatrick. And the ball goes out of bounds. So eight seconds and counting down. It's almost three-quarter time at the WACA ground. In fact, there's the siren. There by the West Coast Eagles to that term. 12 12 to 9 9 at the Wacker. The time they trail by two points at half time. They now trail by 21 points at three quarter time. Here's Bernie Quinlan with the story of the game so far. Yes, well, it's been a very even contest up until about the 15 minute mark of that third quarter when the Eagles really started to lift their game and uh, really finished on very strongly in that quarter to take a 21 point advantage at the three quarter time break. Ross Glendinning with six goals at full forward has been a fantastic player and uh, along with a couple of other good players John Anir has done a great job blanketing Tony McGuinness a couple of the Footscray stars went out of business in that quarter Beasley was held well by Lockyer Foster was quiet across the half forward line and uh, generally they started to win the ball much better out of the centre the uh, West Coast Eagles there are the three quarter time statistics the kicks in favour of the Eagles, 166 to 149. Marks fairly even. Three kicks in favour of Footscray, 19 to 12. Handballs fairly even there again, five in favour of the Eagles. Hitouts, well, favouring the Eagles by 10. And 50 metre penalties, two to the West Coast Eagles. Shots of goals, 25 to the Eagles, 19 to Footscray. Where it counts, the Eagles lead by 21. Perfect timing, the start of the final term. Oh, we're missing the siren. <laughs> Forever, run by Kerry. I might go without it. 12 12 to 9 9. The silent movies. This. And Collingwood to be playing. Where we go then? Mashenko, opposed to all day. Looks great with lumps and early goals. Knocked on by McPherson from all day's tap away. Heavy collision there. Foster went down with Rance. Liberatore twisting and turning. Goes down towards the forward pocket with a kick. Beasley, out he comes. Zanotti knocks it away, though it's taken by Wurzfeld. Ample time to change the direction of play. Main Waring's got it. The opposite back pocket, away he goes. Then there's Chase from Ford. Miles at the second attempt. Not much about it, but he managed to cling on. So Miles has the ball. Forward of right half back. Goes towards half forward with a kick. Coming up almost the strong mark taken by Brennan. Baxter scrambles a kick out of there. Renstead about a good third term. Barrage for Brennan. 
Down towards full forward. Here's the danger man. Glenn Dilling has it knocked away this time. Fitzpatrick gets it towards the boundary line. That's ambitious. The crowd calling for deliberate, but he's paddling the ball in front of himself. No doubt his intention was to get it out. It's the Eagles bench. Just obscured there, trying to peek around with Barry Cable. What a champ he was. One of the great players of all time. Of course, Barry Cable. Now on the Eagles coaching staff. There's Liberatore on the ground. Always running back towards the Eagles goal. Under the left foot he goes. Oh, it's all the Eagles out here too. And John Anir. It wasn't a good play that by Liberatore. Over the top. Finds Laidley. And Laidley from 45 metres. A long floater. He hooks it slightly. All day is here trying to take the mark. It's still in play though. Scott tries to hook it back in. There's Glenn Dinning, the captain. He's already kicked six. He hooks it back across the goal. Trying to set it up for a teammate. He found one now. Dean Turner, the hand pass, back it comes to Laidley, a chip pass across, it's a beautiful pass, and uh, that is straight for Alex Sashenko, who played a very good third quarter for the Eagles when they were in trouble. He's only had four kicks and seven handballs, but his aggression at those centre bounds has made a difference. Sashenko, 45 metres this kick, that's a high drop pass, he hooks it slightly, and in fact has put it through from behind. Interesting tactics there, and as much as McGuinness started on the bench. Yeah, that's right, Dennis. McGuinness was on the bench only for a couple of minutes. Uh, Michael Ford's now off the ground, and McGuinness is back out there. And <laughs> Nia was immediately down there picking him up. Yeah, right. what they were trying to do was shake the tag yeah, of Nia. Shake the tag, it didn't work. See, they picked it up quick, the Eagles. Full credit to their <laughs> bench, and Nia was on him before he came through the gates. Bring him off again, Nick. Well, that was an interesting tactic. Big Malthouse down on the boundary line and shouting instructions. He knows two or three quick goals and they'd be right back in this. The Bulldogs, Royal, towards centre wing. This game really took a remarkable change halfway through the third quarter. There's McGuinness. Footscray was doing it well. And all of a sudden the Eagles picked up their game. There's little Royal who's tried hard all night. A hand pass to Davies. Stabs. 
Good old-fashioned football. All forwards with six goals at either end. Glendinning and Beasley. Four points to margin. It's back in the middle. Just a tick over 20 minutes remaining in the game. What a contest it is. The breeze has fallen away to almost nothing. This is Barrage. Clever hand pass across to Turner. Great play by the Eagles. He goes long into the forward line. Glendinning got his fingertips to it. A chance behind for Gastiff. Great tackle applied down there. It was Hogg. The ball is scrambled back across the goal face by Scott. Getting a fist on it down there was Baxter. Then the ball goes out of bounds in the opposite pocket. Boundary throw and upcoming. Ross Glendinning has been a star on the forward line as has his opposite number Simon Beasley. Scott will do the ruck work against Alday who's rucked tirelessly tonight. Alday wins it down. Royal and Gastiv a lot of talent in there and they wrestle to a draw. John Gastiv has been very busy. Brian Royal likewise. A bit of courage between those two Dennis. Yes, two very gifted players. There's John Gaston. Bounce down inside 25. All day is up. Good spring. Comes it towards the boundary line. Good use of the body by Ugal. He's playing from behind by Royal. Down goes Barrage. Fitzpatrick gets it through somehow to Royal. Royal goes again. But Brennan takes it off him. Kicks it straight across the ground. Coming to meet it out there was Colnook. It's knocked away by McGuinness. It's going to be a free kick, I think. It'll come back to McGuinness at centre half back. Well, John Todd all of a sudden uh, looking good. He uh, looks a worried man there. Foots Bay really picked up their game. It's been a strange game of football. This has been one side dominating, then the other, and uh, maybe McGuinness will be the star of the last quarter. There's a long drop punt, a beautiful kick. Oh, there's a high tackle. Has to be a free kick to main wearing. Ironical cheers from the Pro Eagles crowd. This main wearing in the centre of the ground, a long kick right out wide to the half forward line. Oh, Tatsara has got into all sorts of trouble there. Here's a chance in here. He runs to half forward, a hand pass. It's intercepted beautifully by All Day. Good football to McGuinness. Back it comes to All Day. Terrific play by the big Ruckman as he shrugs the tackle and breaks away and kicks long. Towards half forward, Zanotti. A big thump away, but it's all foot spray. As Wallace gets it out to Petraglia. He'll look for Beasley. One on one again. Oh. Beasley all oh, sucked away by Lockyer. Good one on one contest. That Zanotti hooks it away. Here's a chance. But Traglia, can he put the Bulldogs in front? He stands. Yes, it's a goal to the Bulldogs. Yeah, great fighting play by the Footscray to get back into this match. They looked out of it at three-quarter time. And Traglia kicks his third goal and puts the Bulldogs in front. Traglia on that left foot. Beautiful kick for goal. Runs into the open goal. Now a sound from the Eagles crowd. And they're very happy here, the Bulldogs. Well, a very eerie feeling here when Foot Footscray is doing well. You just cannot hear one murmur around the ground. It's quite uncomfortable, isn't it? That's why. Really is a great word. 13-9 to 12-13. Footscray lead. Royal leading by example. Could have been holding the ball. Barrett goes in. And they tie it up. And you've got to admire the desperation, the application of these Footscray players. John Todd showing concern. Michael Malthouse has really done his homework. I'm sure his example will be followed by quite a few. Other Victorian coaches, Wallace. Quick kick down towards half four. Surely it should have been a free kick. Yes, the whistle has blown. And Wayne Waring will take it about 30 minutes out from goal. And Tony McGinn is playing a great quarter, Dennis. He's got the message, I think. I think we're surprised the near didn't follow him to the bench. Here comes the kick back to the centre square. And the mark is taken by Ashenko. Ashenko kicks into the man on the mark, untidy. Davies with an opportunity now. It was Ashenko on his back, not according to the umpire. It's yard free. It's taken by Turner. Then a little hand pass across to Lamb. Across to Zanotti. He's got space now, Zanotti. This is what he loves to do. One bounce. He goes down towards half forward with a kick. It pitches just in front of Glendinning. Superb judgment, Glendinning. Unfortunately, he slipped. The hand pass intercepted by Baxter. He wobbles it to the outer side. McGuinness again. He's on fire. Around the outer side to his opposite number the man that's tagged him all night Amir he dropped the mark now McPherson with an opportunity knocked down it there brilliantly by Cousins gets it across to Wallace Wallace goes to half forward needs a contest from Beasley thumped away by Lockyer taken by Liberatore McPherson a sweeping hand pass taken by Ashenko Beasley a great tackle under the circumstances no he's been penalized well he's not a tackler by nature but he was playing for the cause there. That was full-blooded. Ashenko stood his ground. Yes, good play by Simon Beasley. He tackled hard, but a little bit high. The play shows. Oh. He actually struck that head down a little bit, so uh, it 
tackle wasn't as high as it looked in the finish, but still the free kick was there. Ashenko. The Eagles under enormous pressure at the moment. Eugle couldn't take the mark. There's Brennan. Trying to tunnel ball and hooks it out. Davies is there. To Hawkins. Mark Hawkins under all sorts of pressure. Here come the Eagles. This is Barrage. Barrage will look for Glendinning. Glendinning in front. Oh, couldn't quite take the mark. Good use of the body. Good play. Oh, what a good play this youngster is. Matthew Hogg. Look at the boys. Beautiful football. To Hawkins. And the Bulldogs playing well. McPherson. Back it comes to Colnyuk. Colnyuk to the pocket. Foster's there. Punched away by Ashenko. And this is a tremendous game of football here at the Wacker in this final quarter. The time clock showing 15 minutes and 20 seconds to go. 87 to 85. Ashenko and Cousins. One down nicely by Ashenko. Taken by Amia. Gets it across to Rance. He's in trouble. His hand pass intercepted by Cousins. Baxter has been a star tonight. Long kick towards Beasley. Fisted away by Lockyer. Quarter the pack, a chance for McPherson. McPherson at close quarters, gets it across to McGuinness, who pulls it back. That's a magnificent effort for them. Eight points the difference. What a great fight back this is by the Bulldog. Renstead was brilliant in the third quarter. He gets it to Lamb. Really, they have they picked up their game. Hawkins, he's been a great player in this quarter too. Here's Gastev. He'll have a red-hot go. Here's a chance at Miles. Knocks it on to Yugo. Can he pick it up? He's got it. On the left foot, he tries to hook it back. Bill Scott's up there. Now it's Glendinning. Drops the ball. Play on Sydney umpire. And that tough Footscray defence forces the ball to the line. You can see the camaraderie there. Players patting each other on the back. A worried John Todd. Four, 14 minutes and 10 seconds to go in this game. Eight points of difference. The Bulldogs in front all day. Out of the ground it comes. Oh, players pouncing. And a Royal has been sensational tonight. A tremendous exhibition of captaincy by Royal. Led from the front. Doug Hawkins. <laughs> He's a clever player. Look at that. As he forced the ball to the line. Brilliant play by Doug Hawkins. And the ball will be thrown in. A half-forward flank for the Eagles. It's funny. We were talking before, Peter. We've got a thriller here. And the crowd almost out of the game. Broadcasting and playing, I guess, in a vacuum. Up goes Glendinning and wins it down. Spills wide of the pack. Hong trying to crash his way through. Is held without it. Hong, he'll take the free kick. He's been outstanding. We've had many outstanding players. If they win this tonight, Footscray, it will be the most gutsy performance by any side coming to Perth against the Eagles. Yes, and then let this player slip through their hands, Matthew Hogg. Hogg goes towards the outer side. They've been gone a couple of times tonight, Footscray. They won't admit it. It's one on the outer side by Laidley. Back towards half four. They've got the numbers out there. Hogg in trouble. Picked up by Alday, who's been a star. And again, to Hawkins from half back. He drives towards half forward. Foster is there, and he takes the mark. Oh. Can they get a goal? Centre square goes long into the path of Beasley. Down there is Lockyer. Lockyer does his job well. Wide of the pack. Chance for Wallace. He's in real trouble, Wallace. It's taken by Lamb. Good shepherd in there too, but Lamb's kicked not a good one. Eugle over the ball. Lamb comes back again. Good hand pass over the top. Sonotti left the ball behind. Sonotti at half back in deep trouble now, but has time. Sends play towards centre wing and the mark is taken by a leading Miles. Back it comes to Renstead. Renstead with poise goes looking for Glenn Dinning. Close attendance, Eppleston, and that's bad luck for Eppleston. It came off his boot and went out of bounds on the ball. Well, actually, uh, Greg Eppleston's done a fantastic job on Glendinning. He really has. Glendinning was far too good for Michael Ford earlier, but uh, Eppleston, normally a halfback flanker, is wearing him like a glove and doing well. Glendinning. Oh, he goes for the big torpedo punt. It floats towards the square. Up they go. The Footscray defenders thumping away. There were three or four of them. Here's Gaskett. Was it out? thought the ball was in and he was out. I'm sure it was too bad. And I think that might have been yeah. what did happen. And Mickey Bolthouse put himself down on the boundary line and shouting encouragement. Let's have a look at that again. I guess the body's out, but there's yeah. no doubt the ball was in. Well, Zeno Tatsaras from half back flank brings it right out around towards the centre wing. Zanotti. Back it comes to worst fold. It's been a terrific player. Is it still in play? It is. McPherson. Petraglia has been good in this quarter. So is McGuinness. McGuinness was grabbed. There's a near. Could have been a free kick to a near. Play on, said the umpire. The advantage played there as we see Main Waring bring it down towards half forward. Dean Turner. No free kick, said the umpire. All day. Battling his heart out. Back it comes towards the half back line. Players really giving everything in this final quarter in a terrific contest. And Mick Holt has almost out the ground on that boundary line. I think he had a whistle before when Gaston had the ball in the pocket. That's the advantage of being on the boundary for a coach. 49 to 20.
12 13 eight points the difference 11 02 remaining in the turn all day who's been a star this could be the making of him tonight in the reserves last week this is wallace in trouble it's jarred free liberatore was taken high must take the free kick no question about that liberatore at half back could you get him low do you think dennis <laughs> it's going be difficult small. wouldn't it kick there's no doubt he was down low when he was tackled he didn't duck into that one liberatore high kick grandstand wing pack into the air waiting behind mcpherson out of space had some time gets it to royal royal will hunt the boundary intelligent football it'll come to ground just inside the 50 meter line up the chest of beasley taken by ashenko untidy hand pass Hugo with an opportunity now they've got the numbers away comes Worsfold. Oh, great defense by Foster. Flicked it off his boot. Worst fall. Lucky not to be penalized there. This is Lamb. Lamb keeps it in play. They're really operating in a confined space. Brilliantly done. Barrett's got it to Ashenko to Rance. Rance a little undecided. Now he pumps it down towards half forward. Glenn Binning is there. What can the champ do? Through his fingertips. Waiting behind Hawkins. Knocks it out only as far as Turner. Turner 50 meters up. Lays it off wide. Polinuk gets back. Great defense. Oh, great defense by the youngster. Sense the danger. And he's sprinted about 50 meters to cut it out. The ball comes back towards half back. It trickles across the boundary line. We've got a thriller. That was absolutely brilliant defense by Colmiuk to get back there and cut that pass off and then follow it up and kick it clear into the uh, well across the boundary line out here on the halfback flank. Well a lot of class shown by that young player tonight Colby oh, all into the back of all day. Play on to the umpire his gas Debbie. he's a worker. Looks for Dean Turner if has he got it all oh, he's flat and it's a free kick. It's a free free kick and he's hurt. Now he's down number 10 Dean Turner popped it in the back and uh, he's right up and be able to take this kick he is only well here's the free kick Gastev gets a hand pass away an untidy one Turner I think got a, a couple of free kicks there pushing the back and then the player fell across him with the knees a double whammy that one and this is an absolutely vital kick for the West Coast Eagles with just over nine minutes to go in this game he is only 25 meters out he kicks wide I think he missed yes he has a bad miss that one they needed that have really lifted them 86 plays 93 so the difference now is seven points and as Dennis said have we got a game on our hands Linton Fitzpatrick on screen and a very disciplined player tonight hasn't had many kicks but has punched forced the ball to the boundary line been an excellent defender Damon from behind almost took the mark the youngster heads for the boundary line and that's very very intelligent play in fact the umpire said they got into his back Peter Carey. It's a free kick to Davies on half-back flank. So Davies taking this kick. Towards centre wing it goes. Foster's up in front. Ashenko over the top. It runs free behind. Renstead onto the loose ball. Centres it. Good kick. Main wearing with space now. Breaks away. Sends it back towards half forward. It's all Footscray at the fall of the ball. And Cousins uncontested takes the mark. Clock running down. 8.27 and counting. Cousins in short to Wallace who's lifted in this final turn. Wallace, the defensive side of the centre circle, told to play on now by the umpire. Wallace trying to get distance in the kick. It goes down towards half quarter. Shenko, the big fellow. Surely it was a mark. Well, they've been hard to get tonight. The hand pass comes across from Barrage. Shenko goes for the short pass. Renstead draws a man. In fact, two. Gets it over the top to Rance. Rance again goes looking for Glenn Denning. Eccleston in from the side, but Glenn Denning takes the mark. Dinning, about 35 metres out from goal, a slight angle, a chance to bring up his seventh and pull the Eagles back to within one point. There's the replay, very good use of the body again, again by Ross Glendini. Ross Glendini sends it goal, it looks pretty good. Just over seven minutes of this game to go, one point the difference, the Bulldogs in front, the next goal vitally important. Here's a chance. Steve McPherson hooks it back. A good centering kick. Oh, nearly a mark, or was it? Yes, it was a mark or a free kick. And it will go to the Eagles, and it is Murray Rance. Center half back, he kicks wide. The worst foul. The worst foul marks out towards the boundary line. And a vital stage like this, as I said. Oh, gee, that's a free kick to the Eagles. I'll push it oh, back. Oh, that should have been Miles' kick. Bad umpiring there. It's towards half forward. Play on as Liberatore tries to get it out. Still play on, said the umpire. This is worst foul again. He's battled his heart out all night, this player. Probably best man on the ground in the first half. This is danger for Footscray because Lamb's got it. Centre of the ground. Glenn Dinney. Eppleston. Oh, good mark. This is where champions fly. Glenn Dinning, too strong for Greg Eppleston. And a chance now for the West Coast Eagles champ. Goal number 
6.05. Fitzpatrick grandstand side. Davies in front. Barrage over the top. Davies battling after this one. He's over the ball. Barrage. You will claim him. The umpire, umpire Mitchell will move in the bouncer down. A look of anguish there. All day is coming off. Great job done by him. Ford is coming on. Perhaps a little more mobility on the forward line. Cousins is up. He'll ruck out the term, obviously. Renstead over the top of Wallace. Quickly across to Barrett. Lamb wants his left foot. It should have been thought out a little better. Lamb goes high down towards full forward. Who's at the drop of the ball? Hawkins is there for Putzgray. Knocks it away from Scott. Taken by Royal. Royal breaks away. Runs a long way. Sends it back towards midfielder. Schenke could mark. Deflected away by McPherson. Opportunity for Zanotti. He shrugs the tackle only just. He's in full cry now, goes over the top to Turner. Turner's inside 50. He's claimed there by Baxter. The ball squirts away. Colnell, hurried kick across the goal face. It's going out towards the boundary. It runs out of bounds and will have a throw in. Scores all level, all tied up. 93 apiece. 5.02 remaining in the term and counting down. Inside five now. Cousins and Rance. One down by Cousins. Petraglia gets out of trouble. High kick back along the grandstand wing. Lamb is favoured. He takes the mark. Play on as the puller is touched off the boot. He gets it across to Barrage. Great shepherding from Lamb. Barrage pulls it back down to what's full forward. It's all foot spray. Two of them fly. But the second attempt had Saras almost the mark. Cousins shovels a hand pass out. Fitzpatrick's got the run of it and forces it out of bounds. We've got a throw in upcoming. Any score at this stage will be absolutely vital. There's Brian Royal. He knows that. Four minutes and 25 seconds to go. Let's see if the Bulldogs can get it down their end. Look at the scoring shots. At the moment, enormous pressure on both sides. It's been an even contest all night. Tremendous tackling. A lot of heart by all players out there. Mickey Moldhouse is on the boundary line, screaming out of his, at his instructions that he closed. There's David Alday, who really did his job in this quarter at the centre bounces. Cousins now doing the ruck work against Scott. Picked away by Baxter. Oh, trip. Or did he trip himself? It's worse, Bob. He's been a star out of the left from a great kick. Glenn Dinning against two of them. Couldn't take the mark. Here's Gastair playing for the free kick. It shouldn't be a free kick. It's not, says Chris Mitchell. And the throw-in will take place deep in that forward pocket. The time clock ticking over. Three minutes and 38 seconds to go in this quarter. Look at the tension on Mick Malthouse. He is a very, very tense man at the moment. Here's a chance for Lady. Has a pot shot at the goals. It's out of bounds again. So still the scores are tied. And the time clock shows three minutes and 22 seconds to go in this game. Wait for the throw in then. Cousins. Over the top comes Brennan. A battle after this ball. Now an opportunity for Turner White at the pack. Christing Turner off. Great tackle weight on there by number 43. That's Hogg. Who forced him across the boundary line. Obviously a very strong, small man. Matthew Hogg. Move the bigger fellow. Throw in then. Scott is up, bumps it forward. What a battle is going on. This is Turner out of the pack and he's got a goal. A goal in favour of the Eagles at the moment this time. Baxter desperately out of defence. Oh, here comes Footscray. A chance for the little fella. Royal, he's got it. Oh, he loses it to Zanotti. If he could have got clear, they would have been right in it. Zanotti out wide. Is it out of bounds? Miles tries to keep it in. He does so. He ducks around. Jeff Miles. Brings it to half forward. Hawkins sets himself. Scott from the back. He's got it, Phil Scott. To Brennan. Brennan kicks. It bounces. Will it bounce through? Oh! Hit the post. But a handy point. Two minutes and fucking exactly two minutes to go. And that kick from Brennan has put, made the difference. Seven points. So two scoring shots now needed by the Bulldogs. And it comes short. The Rattore has it inside two minutes. The clock is the enemy of the Bulldogs now. The ball to the outer side. Taken by Royal got to move it quickly, Royal's away two bounces, and a third, carries him across centre, Royal goes for distance it needs a mark down there, Foster is up Beasley behind, has it knocked away, McGuinness tries to crash his way through, scrambled out by Lockyer, the presence of mind of Rance, lays it off gently, taken by Lamb, grandstand wing leading in the race now is Barrage look at the speeds to go, Barrage down towards the forward pocket, it's down at the wrong end as far as the dogs are concerned, and Edmiston runs it across the boundary line, there's the start of night his team right out the storm. It looks a forlorn hope. Limping back behind players. Barry.
this game. Barrage back towards the boundary line. That'll be the name of the game now for the West Coast Eagles. And regardless of where your allegiances lie, you must admire these Bulldogs tonight. They've been outstanding. Under man tonight, certainly. Underdogs have shown great fight. They were gone a couple of times tonight, and they've come back. We're down to 30 seconds. Off the ground by Baxter. Footscray will not be denied. They work it forward again. Foster paddles it towards half forward. And Leah, Foster softens it away. It's going to be a free kick, and it will be taken by Zanotti. And that will end it. We're down to 19 seconds. And Zanotti will take his time from half back. Great game of football, this one. Ashenko. You wouldn't play on in that situation, would you? You would. He gives it back towards Zanotti. He's in trouble. Foster, the spirit has been superb. McPherson, can he goal from long range? No, he can't. He can't get his score. Going back, the mark is taken by Lockyer, and the siren will sound. The Eagles win. Footscray have lost no supporters tonight. Seven points, the final margin. Footscray pulled away a couple of times, just as the Eagles did. Simon Beasley, a record tonight. I'm sure he'd be a little disappointed nevertheless. He finished with six goals. An outstanding contribution up forward. Seven goals to his counterpart at the other end of the ground, Ross Glendinning. There he is. And both of those players now very prominent indeed in the leading goal kicker award this season. Well, what do you think about that, Bernie? Well, I think he'd go a long way to see a better game than that, and we have come a long way, in fact, haven't we, Peter? <laughs> it's a tremendous game of football, and Footscray lost no, nothing in the way that they approach this game. It's a tremendous game of football. They fought it right out. They looked really gone at three-quarter time when they were down by 21 points. They came back into, into it in that last quarter. McGuinness, who had been well held by Anir, lifted his game, kicked two goals, and for a while it looked like Footscray were going to run away with the game. But of course, the West Coast Eagles are a good side over here. They're a tough side to beat. And uh, the man up on the forward line, Ross Glendinning, with seven goals, four. He was tremendous all night. Miles, who started off on the back line, kicked four goals. And they kicked 11 of the 14 goals from, by the West Coast Eagles. 14-16 to 14-9. Our final scoreline at the Wacker. The margin, seven points to the West Coast Eagles. They'll be singing down there. We're back at the WACA ground after what was a marvellous game of football. The Bulldogs led by six points at quarter time. And then the Eagles came back to lead by two at half time, 21 at three quarter time. And finally, after the scores were tied and Footscray got ahead, we saw the Eagles win it by seven points. OK, gentlemen, Peter McKenna, Bernie Quinlan, an exciting game at the Wacker tonight. Tell us the story. Well, it was a fantastic game of football. And uh, right throughout the night, it's, uh, the beauty of games like that, when you don't know who's going to win the game, it was one side, then the other. During the third quarter, when Renstead took over in the centre and Ashenko was dominating the ruck, it really looked as though the Eagles were going to take over and they led by 21 points at three-quarter time. But, Bernie, no doubt about it, you've got to hand it to Footscray. They really gusted out in that last quarter. Yeah, they showed a lot of fight, didn't they, Footscray? They really fought back hard. Uh, three-quarter time, they looked as if they were completely out of the match. For that last quarter, they kicked five goals straight. In the end, it wasn't enough, but they really gave the Eagles a big fright. Here's the player that did particularly well, Miles, after being beaten by Beasley at full back. He went up on that forward line and kicked four goals. And with him and Glenn Dinning up on that forward line, the Eagles had plenty, plenty of uh, firepower. Of course, Glenn, Glenn Dinning kicked seven goals, four, and was tremendous. He gave away a lot of other goals as well. But uh, tremendous performance by both sides. They would have, uh, I think John Todd would have had a real fright at some stage. He was looking particularly worried. But Traglia, we see on screen there, was a tremendous player in the last quarter. But uh, look, I reckon for courage and uh, just sheer determination, Brian Royal deserves about 20 votes for tonight's game because he was sensational, Royal. He, he set a great example of the rest of his teammates. He burrowed in, he did all the hard yakka. There's the winning goal kicked by a player who didn't have a good night in Dean Turner, but boy, what a valuable goal. The performance of the two full forwards was good. Beasley ended up with six, but was beaten in the end by Lockyer. At the, towards the finish, of course, the great Glenn Dinning kicked seven goals, but a tremendous match. There's the uh, final stats, and uh, as you can see by the stats, there wasn't all that much in it. There was nothing really outstanding there uh, in any department. It was just a good, tough game, and uh, highlighted by the the tackling and the, the strong work, but it went up and down all, all night, Bernie, and really 
I thought it was a pretty even contest. A great performance by Footscray because not many sides come over here and uh, take on the Eagles and nearly knock them off. No, and they were under man too, Peter, because they had Rick Kennedy out from fullback and uh, five changes to the side that was beaten last week by North Melbourne. A lot of the younger players, they really showed a lot of determination, dedication. The three young players that really stood out, Davies, Hogg in the back pocket was great, and Colnook with some of his desperation, he was just fantastic. And also Peter Foster, Dennis, uh, I thought he was terrific at centre-half forward in probably the most difficult position on the ground. Many good players tonight. Stay with us. More to start. And we're back at the WACA ground with the Eagles won by seven points against Footscray. And speaking of seven, a man who kicked seven goals tonight, Ross Glendinning, has taken his season's tally to 25. And here he is talking with Tony Bahaja. Yes, with us, skipper Ross Glendinning. Well, congratulations, Ross, on a fantastic game tonight. And you must be a relieved man to get the four points. Yes, Tony, I thought uh, towards that end of that last quarter, I thought we'd made all our forward moves and uh, we're going to chance to get through and kick a goal to put us in front but we seem to just kept fighting and uh, they try to keep pushing the ball over the boundary line there's a bit of nip and tuck in that last five or ten minutes down that far boundary line and when we got through which is pleasing i think it's great to win those games well now that you're a forward uh, you must have felt the pressure with a few of those kicks towards the uh, the end of the game and your kicking seems to be a lot more accurate it must be hard though having played so little football in the forward line to be given such pressure shots Oh, you're making excuses for me, mate. <laughs> oh, no, I think it's, it's, it's really just bad kicking. Some of the kicks I did miss in tonight's conditions were it's pretty fine. There was no breeze, really. I mean, they should have gone a lot straighter and I should have kicked more goals. But, I mean, that's uh, part of learning. I mean, you can always get better. So I've just got to practice more of that. And the side, were you happy with the fact that they did win under the pressure situations that Footscray put you on? Well, I think uh, that was the pleasing part. I mean, people say we always win at home. Well, that's never going to be the case. I mean, we lost last year here at home. We're never a walk-up start here. And I think uh, to win like we did, tonight to come out in the third quarter and put ourselves in front have a bad lull of about i think 15 or 18 minutes of that quarter and still come back and win the game was pleasing yeah. well apart from uh, the win at geelong you still have yet to actually yep. win in melbourne that must mean a lot to you next week oh sure i mean you play north melbourne under lights at the mcg on friday night they play very well under lights uh, they have a very good record there we're looking forward to the game and uh, if we can win by a point mate, i'll be very happy well thanks very much ross and uh, all the best for the rest of the season maybe you'll get the uh, norm smith medal at the end <laughs> well, stands for that thanks <sighs> ingratiating himself again Tony Bahaja down in the rooms there with Ross Glendinning let's talk about some of the stats in tonight's game beginning with that man Ross Glendinning Bernie yeah Ross Glendinning had a great night on the full forward position 16 kicks 10 marks 5 hand passes 7 goals 5 he was probably the difference between the two sides in the end fought very hard on the forward line Peter Foster played very well for Footscray at centre half forward 15 kicks 9 marks 4 hand passes he didn't kick any goals 2 behinds to Peter Foster but very good Exhibition of centre-half forward play. Adrian Barrage from the West Coast Eagles, 14 kicks and eight hand passes. He was in everything all night. Brian Royal had 21 kicks and 11 hand passes. Had 32 positions last week. Again, he's had 32 positions this week against the Eagles. Gutsy player, isn't he? Great, great player. player. John Walsfold, he had a great first half. Played a little bit in the second half, but still had 17 kicks, five marks and five hand passes. Simon Beasley, Footscray full forward. Seven, uh, six goals from seven kicks, five marks, two free kicks and one hand pass. So uh, he really makes the most of the opportunities that he does get, Simon Beasley. And let's say a record of Footscray too to Simon Beasley. Congratulations to him. And so the league ladder, West Coast and Footscray, the only two sides to have played. And with that victory, as you can see, the Eagles push up 16 points now. Carlton 16, Collingwood 16, West Coast 16, Melbourne 16, and Hawthorne with the game in hand have 12 at the present time. Well, I guess it's fair to say as we look at that league ladder, all roads lead to VFL Park tomorrow. It should be a great game. Collingwood against Carlton. To take a look at that game, here's Sandy Roberts. The year was 1981, and football's greatest rivals were again locked in an epic struggle for the Premiership Cup. As was the case just two years earlier, again, Carlton reigned supreme with a 20-point victory over Collingwood. Since then, the Magpies have struggled, but now, after just four rounds of the 88 season, the Collingwood Army, starved of recent success, can't help but look to September, particularly after their performance against the West Coast Eagles. And as far as they're concerned, tomorrow's game at BFL Park is a dress rehearsal for the game's greatest prize. That attitude may be fine for some supporters, but it is certainly not for Coach Lee Matthews or his players. As far as Matthews is concerned, it's heads down and one game at a time. Tomorrow, it just happens to be Carlton. But Matthews does have great respect for his players. Really, the players are, uh, are playing well together. They certainly you can't uh, 
I don't think anyone who's watched them play can really doubt their commitment, really, and uh, they're working hard at it and getting the results. Tomorrow's opposition, Carlton. The reigning champions, and already again this year, the signs are ominous that they will have a big say on that one day in September. Anyone who witnessed their demolition job on the Sydney Swans will testify to that. And so the scene is set for another classic confrontation. It was Collingwood's performance against the West Coast Eagles that made not only the Army, but also the general football public sit up and take notice. The Magpies roared home by 39 points, but the margin could have been greater. We had 29 scoring shots to 14 or 15. I think that was more the, the telling statistic. I mean, we missed a lot. I did, you know, in the last quarter, I think we kicked 3-6 with the wind, and we certainly had a much, much more of the ball. It's been a long time since Collingwood fans have seen their team in the match of the day against enemy number one, Carlton. Tomorrow, their wish comes true. Sandy Roberts there. Round five continues tomorrow then. Carlton and Collingwood. North Melbourne and Hawthorne, that's an interesting game. Fitzroy and Richmond, Geelong and Essendon, a big game at Cadenia Park, St Kilda and Brisbane, vital game for the Saints. Lockett is back, of course. On Sunday, looking forward to this game, Sydney against Melbourne. Sydney, of course, with Greg Williams back, and they're looking stronger on paper. Check your local guides for details of our coverage here on 7. Well, let's talk about that game coming up tomorrow between Collingwood and Carlton. Pete, who do you like? Well, I think that the BFL will be absolutely delighted that Collingwood are, are doing so well I don't know, I saw Carlton last week against um, the Sydney Swans and they look just, they just look so good and uh, I think their little men will win it for them, for them, Bernie. They've got that mosquito fleet of six or seven really top class little men. Uh, I think it'll be tight but I think Carlton will win. Yeah, I agree with you, Peter. I think uh, Collingwood with a few injury problems that they do have, they have improved immensely on last year's form. But, uh, gee, Carlton are a class combination, and I think, if anything, they've improved on last year's form. And you look down the forward line, you see Stephen Kernahan and Stephen Silvani, who are both in brilliant form. They'll, they'll miss uh, Richard Dennis. Richard Dennis, a former West Australian, has been an outstanding player since coming across. He wasn't a, didn't have a big name, but he's been a real great contributor. He tore a hamstring last week against the Swans. They'll miss him, but I think guys like Bradley and Johnson and Harms and, well, you could go right through the lot. Reese Jones, they've just got so many great players at ground level. And also the, the player that makes a big difference to that side is uh, Justin Madden playing in the ruck. When right. you've got a bloke six foot nine, it's pretty hard to jump over a bloke of that size all day. And it was rotten luck for Collingwood to lose uh, Manson because yep. Manson's really kicked them on this year, a real goer and uh, a big job for Wes Fellows against Justin Madden who really starts the ball rolling through the centre bounces. And doubt's going with players like Mullane and Brown. It's always a worry if you support a club to know that players have to undergo fitness tests before they start. I mean, obviously, all is not well. Exactly, and Barwick was another one who didn't yeah, play sure. particularly yeah. well this week. He had to leave the track early on Thursday night, so there's a lot of players with uh, injury problems there at Collingwood. Well, I'm going up to Sydney on Sunday, and I'm looking forward to that game. Melbourne against Sydney with Williams back. They could spring a surprise up there. Melbourne have never won in Sydney. Melbourne have never won an interstate game, as a matter of fact. They were beaten by the Bears last year, and of course the Eagles, and... Uh, so a big job for Melbourne. I think they go in with the better side and the better record at the moment. But that Swan side looks a far better side with Morwood and Williams back in the side. And, uh, well, I'm personally tipping the Swans to cause a big upset. Oh, well, I'm going with you, Peter. That's I'm no upset the then, is it? Well, because, uh, well, it's an Melbourne... upset with most scribes. Yeah, Melbourne have been winning, but they haven't been all that impressive. They've uh, wasted a lot of opportunities. I suppose you can't knock winning for them, but a lot of their uh, games they have been a little bit patchy. And well, you're saying that coming off the drubbing that the Swans received last week at the hands of oh, Carlton. I think Carlton are going to give the same ground. Carlton are going to give a lot of sides a drubbing this year, and uh, I thought the Swans' performance the week before that against Hawthorne at Vervel Park was excellent. And uh, providing that one or two of their forwards can fire, Glenn Coleman will have to do well, and Cordner might lift himself because he's playing against his former club, and he'll really give it 100% uh, tomorrow, David Cordner. Of course, the evergreen Craig Davis is up there sneaking a couple of few weeks. He's the oldest player since Bernie Quinlan retired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, from Sunday, uh, let's come back. You, and after this personal insult, <laughs> let's come back to tonight. Footscray, Bernie, shall we see people reassessing their assessment of Footscray because of the performance they gave tonight? Well, we saw Footscray early in the season, didn't we, Peter, against the Swans? And, uh, not they, impressive. They won the match, but they were not impressive at all. And uh, I thought personally myself that they'd come over here and find it very hard against the West Coast Eagles. I thought it may have been a big win to the Eagles tonight, but uh, Footscray proved me wrong and I'm glad they did because they uh, put up a tremendous performance. They've got a lot of young promising players in that side and I think they may be able to go on from there.
Well, turn out the lights. The party's over. Thank you, gentlemen. Peter McKenna and Bernie Quinlan. Down here at the Wacker tonight, the Eagles got home by seven points. They're third on the table. Thanks for your company. Good night. This has been a seven-sport presentation for the Australian Television Network.